three fearless escape room teams from yesterday. And um, now I'd like to look at some of the questions that challenge them in session one. So if you, um, if you remember the questions, you'll remember the first set of questions. The goal was to familiarize you with the Unlock Project. That's the project that brought us here today to this conference. And if you're familiar with any of our products, then maybe you've done the MOOC and it was easy for you to remember that Monique and Irvin are professors at Lernovania University, which was the answer to that question. Also, if you've looked at any of our products, then maybe you remember we have lots of case studies examples and information about escape rooms and perusing the site you'll see that we have 37 different case studies that, about educational escape rooms that you can read for inspiration. The third question in session one, the goal was to familiarize you with the conference and the topics that you could learn more about at the conference. So for that we created a matching activity in H5P and that's what you see here. Now, the second escape room session also had three questions. Uh, we used Flippity to create a matching exercise. And again, that was to familiarize you with some of the topics at the conference, like you know, gamification, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, and so on. The next question asked you to reflect on the plenary. So we zoomed in on one of the sessions. Um, the plenary was about future trends and innovation. And so we wanted to see if you remembered what some of those were. And you could have gotten the answer from the plenary, from reading the blurb about the plenary, or from our little hangman activity, which we also created in Flippity. The answers for that were stakeholder engagement, immersive learning experiences, and equity partnerships. Those are future trends and innovations that we're excited about. And the final question, um, I gave you a little bit, a little hint before you got started, and that was you needed a keen eye. And that's because the question was not in a website that you went to, uh, obviously, you know, like a readily obvious, but was actually on the page itself. And that question was about challenge based learning, another important topic you can learn about at our conference. And we wanted to know if you knew what, and we wanted to draw your attention to the three key elements of challenge based learning, which are act, engage, and investigate. So our um, teams did a really great job with those challenges and those questions. The points were really close, but in the end, one team did emerge as a winner, and that was Team Rebels. So congratulations to them, a round of applause to everybody who participated. And um, yeah, I hope you guys- yeah, can thanks. Yeah, <laughs> good work. And um, yeah, so um, I hope everybody, yeah, continues to have a, a fun and inspiring today on our last day of the conference. Thanks, Christy. It was, uh, it, um, so before we get to it, like, and uh, we are like, uh, we are, we have like a plenary session uh, for you, but like before everybody joins, like we were waiting for the panelists and um, the moderator. So before we get to it, um, uh, maybe can you share a bit like how was it for you to really moderate like an online escape room, like in this kind of for somebody that would like to try it, uh, maybe some like one, two tips that really stand out to you um, in the process of kind of running it on-site, online. Is that a question for me? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. like for Richard? Or for Richard, he can, um, yeah, also if he's interested. Um, but I would just say, you know, um, and this also is true for the classroom when you have multiple groups or students that you need to manage, um, being clear with your instructions and setting up everybody so that they can be kind of independent learner learners uh, is the most important. So um, a lot of the work goes on behind the scenes before the action takes place. And then that allows for a much more manageable game experience or learning experience. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Um, if I can quickly chip in. Um, so like Kristen mentioned, a lot of work goes behind the scenes. And also for the escape room, uh, this one, although it was a very, I would say, 
short, small, not a lot of questions, and uh, for fun, escape room. Uh, we did a lot of prep work, and we did a lot of testing, so that's very important. And um, we did test with um, laptops, uh, but we did not take into consideration that one might decide to join the escape room via mobile phone. Um, and then even the reason that I bring this up is that even when you do a lot of testing, it's very important to take into consideration all the different ways that the players could partake in the experience. And uh, in this case, we just forgot, you know, this very convenient way as well to, to let's say, um, explore or navigate websites. So um, testing is very important. And uh, yeah, just wanted to add that. So, um, and uh, I wish you enjoyed playing in the escape room and uh, congrats again to the winning team. Thank you. Um, oh no, thank you. Uh, let me see. Sorry. <laughs> um, give me one second, everybody, because like I'm reaching out to the panelists to see if they have any problem with um, joining. Let me just ask one question. Can I? Is there a prize? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Our, our respect. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And admiration. Yes. That's exactly what the students ask all the time, right? Like, what do we get now? What do we get? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I will slowly start saving the spinners back because the panelists are not showing up. But I'm my name is Andrei Dishenko. I'm going to host the panel session today. Despina, I apologize for not using the unlock background. I really tried, but apparently my face is too similar to that gray. I don't know. Probably I, I should be. Uh, <laughs> I should eat healthier. I don't know because it doesn't uh, distinguish between the two. So I, I decided that I'll. Just have some plans on the background for now. Hello, everyone. Kristen, good to see you. Uh, Richard, uh, well, people I know, but um, really good to see everyone else as well. So we're going to have a panel session today. Uh, and if uh, panelists don't show up, we still are going to have a good conversation, I'm sure about that. But we do hope uh, to see them. So it's going to be well, I mean, I, th I think it's going to be a pretty smooth transition from where uh, Richard uh, has been now. So it's going to be about designing uh, designing edu games and perspective from the game industry and universities. Okay, I see one of the panelists is showing up actually. Um, Zina. Andre, I'm also here. Oh yeah, I'm, I apologize, Mateus. Okay, we're only, we're only missing one. Good okay. morning. Good morning. Despina, have you heard from Rajiv? No, not yet. I I meant to go. Maybe let's wait. Two minutes. Yeah. And... Two minutes and then we uh... Because uh, yesterday we didn't have enough time for discussion, so we I know. didn't have the same mistake. <laughs> no, 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 and and I will also definitely uh, shorten my own words, so I'll, I'll I'll really get. So we'll try to just get right into into it. But it'll be really nice because uh, well, Rajiv has a really interesting perspective to share. So I really wouldn't 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 want to start without him. <clears throat> So how how was it uh, how was it for you guys so far? It's the second and the last day. Yeah. Yesterday was uh, was like a thing a long day for everybody. Uh, also the the program was really packed. Like we had like a few parallel sessions of um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe one uh, one uh, learning. Um, 
one learning point for me is like to have uh, earlier in the day the more demanding uh, presentations like speaking and by that I mean like the research-based abstracts because they're more technical and they go into like a lot of detailing and uh, graphs and statistics and maybe keep more like case-based like it's not that they are like completely like easier but like it's kind of a more smooth transition to more ap applicable knowledge later for mm -hmm. the day. Um, because well, online online um, conference is not exactly like the on-site ones yeah it's a little bit like designing a game right mm. so uh, try to space engaging spots uh well along the along the journey Okay, well, I, I hope that this is going to be one of those one one of those uh, hot spots for the for, for today, and that uh, the coffee still didn't wear out yet for anyone. Certainly not for me. Um, so, what do you, what do you say, uh, Despinam? Yeah, it's another another thing about online conferences, right? It's pretty easy not to show up because uh, people are not going to chase you. I can give him a phone call. Um, so yeah, you can start introducing yourself and then I can. Yes. Okay. Let's, let's just go, go ahead. And I think that it's not going to hurt if Rajiv will not know, uh, everything about me. So, uh, my name is Andrei Dichyanka. I'm the learning experience designer at UIN. Uh, so I have keen interest in designing educational games that I, and I, so I am really excited about this conversation. He's here. He's here. Oh, yeah. amazing. <laughs> Welcome, Rajiv. Hello. Welcome. Hello, Rajiv. Hi. Hello. Okay, we almost started without you, but actually we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good to, good to have you here. So we are complete, right? So mm -hmm. let's start. So I um, <clears throat> my name is my name is Andrei Dichyank. As I said, I'm learn experience designer at UI, UIN. Uh, but I I think this is not really interesting and important for anyone. So uh, this is the second and uh, last day uh, of this conference. And uh, I hope you are enjoying it so far. And if there is one thing that we've learned from yesterday is that uh, the host should speak less and let the panelists talk and let the conversation flow. So I'm really excited about this, uh, this conversation. Please, please uh, come up with the questions. Uh, don't let the panelists sit still. And um, uh, I hope we are going to learn a lot, uh, so, so, something new and interesting today. So let me, before we jump in, let me just say literally a couple of words about uh, every panelist. So I will, I will go in the order that I see them on the screen right now. So I'll start with Zina. Uh, Zina Deliagina, she's, uh, she's a founder and uh, experience designer at Customatica Escape Rooms in Amsterdam. These are, uh, one of the first real life gaming uh, companies that appeared in the Netherlands and it's been operating for the last uh, nine years. And uh, they've been, yeah, since then they've been delivering uh, escape room based experiences and professional trainings and educational experiences based on uh, the concepts of escape rooms and real life gaming for people. So, uh, so she'll uh, bring uh, to us a somewhat technical approach, a practical approach, practical uh, angle, uh, talk about, uh, hopefully talk about puzzle design, uh, how, how, to keep, how to keep players engaged, how to design the player's journey, so, and, and how to integrate educational elements into that. Okay, so next up is uh, Rajiv Vasayu Moit. I hope I pronounced it well, yes, well, well enough. Well Thank you. <laughs> Well, he's the head of sci-fi and innovation at uh, Arus uh, University and has uh, many years of experience as an uh, educator of entrepreneurship and innovation. And lately, uh, he's also founder of Biosymphonics and uh, designer of a award-winning game, A Ship Navigating Uncertainty, which is a board game to teach entry-level skills to entrepreneurs. Uh, I'm sure that I'm, I, I left a lot of things out, but please feel free to fill, fill, fill the blanks for me. And uh, finally, we have uh, Mateos Kakaris. He's a director of Attermon. Uh, there's a company here in the, in the Netherlands uh, that specializes in, uh, the, in educational game development and, learn, and, and using technolo like 
technology and also existing games uh, to uh, for educational purposes. Yes, so I hope here uh, I, I'm really interested in uh, hearing about his approach of learnification of gaming as opposed to gamification of learning. So uh, I'm not 100% uh, understand what does it mean, and so, but I'm hopefully, hopefully, Mateus, you're going to fill us up on that. Um, maybe. maybe, yeah, great. So enough of me speaking. So for now, I think the plan is that each of you give a, gives us a sort of seven minutes primer on uh, uh, on your approach to design edu educational games and your angle that you are going to tackle this conversation from. And then we are going to just open this uh, panel for discussion. Can we start with Mateus? I'm super curious about learnification of gaming. Yeah, I think that is really, if Mateus, if you don't mind. No, no, I, I, uh, I really don't mind. Um... Well, the whole thing uh, started uh, from uh, different companies uh, I used to, I'm involved in over the years as an entrepreneur. And uh, uh, one of them uh, was working with, uh, is still working with educational publishers and uh, uh, banks and other corporations. And uh, every time, uh, the question came up of uh, creating games for disseminating knowledge. And uh, this company has been around for almost 20 years, but I have never been happy with any of the results in this regard. Uh, it was always uh, starting with learning objectives and trying to do uh, gamification. And uh, we never ended up with uh, an entertaining game that uh, would be primarily amusing and uh, then uh, people would uh, be able to uh, indirectly learn things out of playing the game. Uh, so I always had in mind that uh, we are starting at the wrong end of things and uh, gamification is not something that we want to do as a, as a company. We, we found it a little bit boring uh, the way it is done. Um, uh, also, if I think it's, uh, you know, bear in mind, I'm not an academic, I'm a businessman for the most part, yeah, so I will speak very plain, using very plain words, uh, which was maybe are not uh, academically correct, yeah, but, so I apologize for that in advance, uh, but uh, even uh, starting to define gamification, you see that people use a, a different definition, uh, uh, many people uh, think gamification is about uh, using a PowerPoint instead of uh, of using a word or doing quizzes and breaking up the, the theory with uh, small mini games and stuff. Uh, we, we never thought, uh, especially our customers, educational publishers were pretty much into this, but we never found it uh, particularly interesting. So I founded the company to, to work uh, in a different direction. Uh, we thought that uh, we want to first start with kids uh, aged uh, 8 to 14. And uh, all these kids have uh, something very much in common. They uh, have spent or continue to spend a lot of time in Minecraft. So we thought this is a very nice platform. It already exists everywhere. Uh, there is no infrastructure needed. And uh, the, the kids already spend too much time uh, in, 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 in Minecraft. So let's create comparing games, like uh, uh, very nice stories and then uh, try to infuse these stories with uh, uh, knowledge. Like first create a comparing game, which we can sell at the bedrock market, and then start uh, working on uh, knowledge domains and use learning objectives and trying to learnify our games. But only after we have a second game, and then we create a version of it that can really be used for learning purposes. And this is what we are currently experimenting with. The roadmap is to have the first game released uh, summer of 2023. So we are at the peak of, of uh, the activity. And uh, yeah, basically this is, this is the approach we want to try. First the game, and then try to uh, and then try to work with the learning objectives and uh, introduce a version of the game that can actually be used uh, for disseminating knowledge on a specific subject. 
And uh, this is going to be our approach to educational gaming. So I hope I didn't run much out of time. Sure. No, 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 actually you didn't. That's really uh, no, no, really exciting. Yeah, there's a lot of things that I can relate to. The way I'd like to run this panel is that after each, uh, e each panelist has spoken, we have time for exactly one question. So we don't have a, a, like a, a, a long streak of, of uh, uh, silence. So if anyone wants to jump in with a question, uh, feel free to do so. Otherwise, we can do it afterwards. Can I? Can I ask a question? Uh, yes, Eva, let's let's go first because you need yes. to talk. Yeah. Hi, thanks. Thanks a lot, Matthias, for the introduction. This is really an interesting approach. Uh, I want to jump on then the goal of uh, the game. So you say you want to disseminate knowledge, but what about maybe changing behavior or attaining some kind of skills like collaboration and something else as well? Could that also be a goal of the game? Uh, this is uh, uh, embedded in uh, in the game because of uh, using Minecraft, which is a massively multiplayer online game. Uh, we actually, uh, our stories uh, uh, have also collaboration uh, in mind and uh, uh, Minecraft and Roblox are the new platforms for kids to socialize. We used to play outside on, on the streets, but uh, it seems to be that uh, kids are now socializing and collaborating using this uh, these platforms. So uh, actually, yeah, we are not talking about uh, single player games, games that kids will uh, play and isolate themselves from uh, other kids, but we are talking about collaborative uh, uh, games. And we also we also do escape rooms, which uh, again are uh, 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 working collaboratively with five uh, kids playing at the same time. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so. Let it, let's move to the next uh, panelist introduction. Rajiv, Zina, do you have preference? I can go since we just mentioned an escape room. Okay, that's a nice bridge, exactly. Um, so we started the company about nine years ago. And as initially we started more thinking about um, entertainment with the meaning, uh, something that would be opposite to social media because Personally, I really didn't enjoy the clash of personalities uh, online and offline. Well, online, uh, offline, everybody seemed to be very excited. There are a lot of smileys, emojis and stuff that smiles instead of you. I really wanted to see people smiling to each other properly. <laughs> so there comes uh, the whole idea of leaving the phones behind. And then it was important for us to have it uh, story driven uh, because the first escape room I played, like had a topic, but then inside it felt that the topic is gone. So the things are themes, but then we are solving something that has nothing to do with the topic. So it felt like an obvious uh, line to improvement. But now I would probably switch the introduction a little bit uh, further to something we did uh, towards the trainings. So when we started the games, it was soon obvious that a lot of companies were interested in participating as team building. We didn't really count on it, but it became obvious that it's about like third of our clients. And they were really excited to see something new um, that is not, uh, that's not anymore like PDF or some like team building based on A4 sheets. So then we created a training program that would um, like use uh, what was created in the escape room. I'm sorry, I put my phone on the silence because that annoys me. Okay, done. Um, so we made a program that would use what we've seen from the camera's feed. Um, that was uh, very important for companies uh, that when they were coming to the escape room, there was no more hierarchy because there is no routine, there is no pre-expectation, nobody knows what to expect. I think that's the key of the escape rooms, which makes it tri tricky like to like sort of advertise and sell to people because you don't want to give up anything. But then we use that fact that like they come and with no expectation, people perform much better. <laughs> there is no, um, yeah, like anybody can become the smarter one. Anybody can discover things, uh, figure out how it works. 
And this was a very cool thing to see, the sparkle in people that, you know, they're excited to actually do things, which was also for HRs and directors something new, because usually director is the person who is like, come on, guys, you know, this will be fun, uh, but people don't trust this. <laughs> So then you actually see that people are having fun. Nobody needs to tell them that they are having fun. It's quite obvious. Um, and after the escape room, now what we do, we call it conscious experience. And um, this is for them to figure out what kind of roles they had inside, what made them be in a team. Um, and what is nice about it, uh, that first of all, it doesn't always uh, correlate with their roles in the company. Uh, which makes it obvious for them that they have qualities they maybe uh, can explore more or use more. And second thing, which usually comes uh, as a result of the workshop, it becomes really obvious that they need each other. And while at work, you can be annoyed that this, people, this person doesn't have this and this quality, in the workshop, we make it obvious that it is balancing by having other qualities that maybe you don't have. So sort of it removes the idea of getting annoyed that people are not like you because, you know, you're punctual and this guy's not, but he's creative and you're not. So this idea of looking at the ingredients of team, um, also talking about, uh, for example, in the result of failure, what role was lacking in the team? <clears throat> because maybe it was great, like, you know, people were very active and participating, but there was no sound, like no person took a role of coordinating. So, you know, then um, this is obvious. Sometimes, for example, as a result, I can see that the role of coordinator being um, invisible. So people don't realize it. So sort of that's always a yummy part for directors when their role gets to be uh, acknowledged that, well, actually you're not doing things physically, but you run the show. <laughs> and for directors, it's always very nice that it's not coming from them, that they have to explain to people, well, actually, I'm like kind of doing things behind. Um, so that's quite nice when people understand that it's so nice to be team and to be diverse and interact uh, and appreciate different qualities of each other. Um, so that's just coming back from the question about like uh, infusing collaboration, uh, looking at it and enjoying it. I think I would stop right here. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. That was a nice primer. Um, yes. Uh, by the way, yes, that's a good. That's a good point. We just you just got it on the uh, on your chat. You can also so if uh, you can also write down the questions in the chat so you, so we can just uh, get to them later after this after the um, after the introductions. But uh, anyone has a question to Zina? She, I'm, I'm pretty sure that she's going to be back in a second. Yeah, there she is. Okay, no, no question to Zina. Then, then I'll, I'll, I have actually a question. So, <clears throat> uh, you said that you can, you can uh, use escape rooms to. Uh, to teach collaboration and to teach, uh, like in in general, uh, to teach different roles in the team and and all those things. So these are these are the soft skills. But do you have any experience? Do you have some experience when the companies come to you and they have some more specific learning goals uh, that they would would want to achieve? And is there a way to? Because I understand that the escape room is pretty fixed thing, and I think that's part. That's like one of the maybe drawbacks or challenges that's associated with it. So. Um, how do you deal with and uh, uh, and if a company wants to have a specific theme or specific learning objective uh, in uh, as a result of your experience? Uh, so far, as you mentioned, because the escape room was primarily not built for education, so we do use uh, workshops. Uh, so basically, we get some gasoline from the escape room that. Uh, people are excited, very open and very willing to do more things as a team. Uh, so escape room in that case is almost an opener uh, to people, but then we achieve it through the workshop. So yeah, that's sort of discussing with an HR what's the specific goal, uh, focusing on the purpose of their goal, like just seeing how the team collaborates during the escape room and then bringing it on and using it in the workshop. All right, that's clear. Thank you. 
Okay, let's move to Rajiv before we open the discussion. Mm -hmm. Rajiv, would you be so kind to yeah. give us an introduction? Yeah, okay. Um, thanks for the introduction, Andre, earlier. Um, so yeah, as you probably heard Andre also saying that, um, so I, I'm coming at this from both an academic side, but also a business side as well, because I have a dual role where I also um, both, uh, you know, teach and research in entrepreneurship education. But at the same time, I also have a serious game company on the side, where, uh, which was essentially formed out of my own frustration of um, not being able to get what I really wanted in the learning game space, essentially. So uh, it, very similar to what Matthias was saying earlier that you know he decided to chart his own way because people were sort of gamifying learning and he wanted to learnify gaming. And, um, and, and whether or not we sort of you know describe these kind of definitionals, and, and I think for, for my end, of course, definitions are, while they're important, I think it's, it's about how you do them that's more important. And I think uh, what we realize is if you gamify learning, um, and, uh, and, and you think that, well, that's not working very well. That's probably because you're not gamifying either very well or your learning was bad to start with. Um, on the other hand, if you also start, go about and say, oh, let's learnify gaming, the risk there is also that you could end up having, um, you know, adding learning only as an afterthought and not as sort of an integrated sort of element that you want. So I think in essence, what all of us sort of want here is of course, something that's very integrated, something that's very, you know, inbuilt uh, from, from scratch. And I think that is what at least my experience was um, when I first had some challenges within entrepreneurship education, and I said, okay, can we maybe use a game to try and get, get some of these concepts across? And of course, I outsourced this to, to, to gaming companies, and I rejected those solutions that the gaming companies provided because they were so much focused on fun that they discounted the learning objectives. And, uh, and every time I said, but I would like to have this. And they said, no, no, if you add this, this will make the game boring. You can add that in the lecture later on, but let the game only have fun, right? So I think that for me was always a sort of a, a, a problem that, the, that there was so much focus on the fun, but at the cost of the learning objective. Um, and uh, so that's where at least um, um, I came from and I said, okay, why can't players have enough fun and enough sort of, you know, learning at the same time. So sort of built this sort of together. So using this kind of uh, approach, we have tried to sort of be like, because remember we are in the serious game space. So, uh, and while we are not saying that serious games should not be fun, I mean, they're supposed to be fun. A game is supposed to be fun, uh, but they are serious as well. And I think sometimes getting that balance right is is quite important. Um, uh, I think what Zena also just mentioned uh, now about the escape room was that, uh, that you know, the, uh, the educational objective might now be added at a, at a later point and maybe through workshops and things like that. But what happens in the escape room itself? And I think now we actually have data to support this where we actually found out that, of course, the learning will always be limited in escape room. And the reason for that is because an escape room is a very controlled and a very tight space. Um, and, and therefore, I think one should also be clear what our objectives are, what do we want to get out of that objective, and then, of course, bring the learning uh, forward. Um, and here, for example, we I have an example from um, the, what we have been doing in, in, in an escape room with trying to teach intellectual property, for example, which is a very complicated topic. And if I could claim that an escape room can actually teach you, uh, you know, the ins and outs of patterns, that would, you know, be a groundbreaking invention. But uh, we were happy to find out that actually that's not the case in the sense that uh, we use the game as an opener into the world of patents uh, and intellectual property so that students get an idea that this is actually interesting, that this is approachable. So the idea is about can we make something more approachable using a short escape room format? And then we, of course, go into the lecture that, of course, uh, then tries to break down what is it that you experience in an escape room. So, so that's sort of the, uh, let's say, the approach uh, I've been having both in either board games or, or digital games. Um, you know, the idea being that games and learning have to go hand in hand. And I think sometimes we should not cut down uh, on uh, complexity or cut down on um, on, on learning goals uh, just for the sake of fun. I think those are the, my two main, let's say, um, take home points. Yeah. Thank you, Rajiv. Yes, super interesting. I have lo lots of questions already popping up in my head, uh, but I, I'd like the audience to jump in first. So I think we can uh, officially open this panel for discussion and uh, please shoot your question to the panelists.
Okay, well, I, uh, that's actually great because I have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> no jokes. Maybe I can uh, maybe I can start with uh, with Rajiv because a lot of what you said has resonated uh, has resonated with me. Um, and uh, when you say that, like like uh, th this problem with having. Uh, we, we, like with having learning objectives, kind of, kind of like a, a side side uh, thing on top of the game, like this famous math blasters experience, right? When you, uh, when when you would uh, solve uh, mathematical problems, and as a as an award, you were allowed to play a fun game, and then at the end of the day, the math actually turned into somewhat of a hurdle in front of the game. So people ended up hating math because of uh, because it wouldn't allow them to. To, to you know to shoot the blaster and this is definitely not what we want um i really um i really like how you how, how you said that the escape room can be a primer for something um but uh, i'm curious whether you mean it in a sense that escape room uh kind of gives you an, an uh, initial knowledge of the topic or escape room tells you a story where through which you understand let's say intellectual property is an integral part of life and there is no like no way avoiding it and and people are uh, kind of connect to it on an emotional level and then it becomes more meaningful for them to listen through a lecture on intellectual property afterwards like what's can you expand on that a little bit yeah so um yeah i, I think what i really meant is um is of course it goes to the design what is your what is the design behind right so that's where you would come up with with, with something so for example if you wanted an experience uh, where people sort of uh, understand what you just said, that, you know, intellectual property is something that's unavoidable, then that's something one could design into, um, right? So, and and then you could, of course, uh, give them that experience. But because escape rooms by their nature are short and time controlled, um, you would sort of get a, this kind of mini experience. And then you could dive into uh, a little later uh, with with sort of the, the depth that one probably needs in a particular topic. Um, so. I think for me, an, an escape room was always uh, one of the methods, and I think that's one of the things we should also consider when we talk gaming, is that what we need is is a diversity of, of games and diversity of, let's say, methods of introducing different, you, you know, uh, of, of coming down, uh, bringing down different challenges. But I think um, if you really think that an escape room only should solve all the problems that you have in your in your learning space and of course you're already starting at the wrong sort of spot um, and again it's 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 uh, the the question always i ask but it, it doesn't matter what type of learning uh, challenge you have the question always is should it be the first question you, you should ask is is the learning itself boring to start with like you know i mean i think that's the first question then you should ask okay should i use a game to solve this particular problem because it's not always that a game can solve that problem and then you could come up with okay should it which type of game are we now going to think about should it be an escape room should it be sort of a board room a board game should it be something else you know so uh, or a playful experience that can solve this issue so if you go with that kind of process i think you're more likely to solve your objective rather than just saying oh escape rooms are cool everybody's doing it let's try and just do this you know for, because then you will end up just having that kind of addition and not really uh, you know having this design from scratch yep Does anyone okay uh, I see Richard raised hand. Richard, please. Um, so good morning, everyone. Thank you for the very interesting perspective. Um, I have a question. Actually, this is for all the panel um, members, and it relates maybe a bit to what Rajiv has been mentioning. Um, so it's about games as a method. Um, and I'm especially very interested in because uh, students, uh, each might they have, you know, the, their, let's say, personal learning styles. And I, I was wondering if there are any, um, let's say, experience that you have, maybe studies you have read or research that you have been doing yourself, it doesn't have to be academic research, where you were able to explore um, different methods and how these relate to the personal learning of students because I assume a very ideal setting would be that um, students have the opportunity to choose between different methods that they are more keen to, 
um, especially if you also think that you might have students that have different, I would say, um, the skills they have would be developed at different levels. So they might also choose a game that allows them to keep further developing their skills. Um, so no, to make this entire experience of choosing different methods also to be something that is personal to help them to, let's say, achieve the more out of a, if it's offered in a module or if it's offered in a, let's say, a minor track or something like that. Who would like to comment on that? I mean, I'm happy to go if the, but I've just been speaking, so I'll yeah. give the others a chance. Mateus, maybe you have something to say about that? Uh, honestly, um, I got a little bit confused, uh, uh, Richard. Um, can you kind of rephrase a little bit the issue so that Maybe I can contribute a little bit because uh, I'm not quite sure I understood. Sorry about this. So my, my question uh, in a different way is, uh, have you explored the possibility to combine game as a method with other types of methods to enable individual learning, so personalized learning of students? And what are the results of the um, the uh, experiences or the tests. Okay, uh, then uh, I can be quick because this is not something that we try as such. Uh, we want uh, our uh, approach is uh, uh, very much different. Uh, we do not take into account, uh, always taking into consideration that we start from the game. Uh, in our approach, we don't take into account the individual learning styles in what we are doing at the moment. Hopefully, maybe someday we, we will be able to, uh, using AI and, and, and more advanced technologies, we, we may be able to, uh, let's say, dynamically change the PA environment to uh, take into account such considerations. But at the moment, we don't. So uh, it is not uh really something that i can provide something of substance uh in this regard so i will stop here and stop wasting your time okay uh, unless zina wants to say something then i think there is no way around rajiv of you uh, around you commenting on that too well i'm not interacting too much with students <laughs> i think I, i'll pass the word to rajiv yeah okay um, yeah, uh, so I think, um, and, and hello Richard, so it is a, an excellent question, I think, because in, in terms of how does one engage, and it goes back to sort of saying, are there multiple methods? We, uh, I think there are, uh, and, and a lot of people have been trying a lot of different methods, and there are studies that have also shown this, uh, but I think what is more interesting is that uh, this... And there will always be this challenge, right? Because as a classroom, you always want to design, um, you know, experiences for everyone, right? Because it's also easy on the teacher. I mean, it's, so personalized learning is 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 a is a great, let's say, ideal to have, but it's quite practically quite challenging to sort of implement in a classroom um, setting. So I think one of the things that one could try uh, is at least ensuring that you have enough diversity of methods um, to start with so that you, you cover broad uh, the different uh, sort of, you know, learning styles that the students might have. Um, I think um, I look at it from, from two uh, perspectives. Um, one is that, um, and, and this goes back something to what I was saying also earlier, if your lear learning starting point is already weak. Um, and, you know, I also believe that if, if the way you have thought of how you want to teach a particular topic and how you want to communicate that is already weak from the start, I don't think uh, like adding any amount of gaming might solve that problem. I think I think that's you know you have to actually go back and 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 relook at the content design that you have already. That's one. The other is then okay. Now there are some students that maybe 
you know prefer more um, are more visual there are some that may be more 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 auditory than and there are some that maybe have more faster responses for example and then uh, you know uh, you could for example design games that that allow of course everyone has to play them um i i don't think we have seen studies where you have multiple methods deployed at the same time and then where people choose and then you measure the outcomes i don't think those studies, at least I haven't come across them. So creating those studies, of course, is, a, is, an, is an avenue to sort of explore from a research angle. But I think from, uh, from what we are seeing is that if you just offer a diversity of methods to everyone, but everyone goes through the other, to, to each of them, and then at the end, if you ask them, of course, you hear them saying, I, I didn't really enjoy this, um, this particular session, or I felt that I wasn't that good at this session. And we have seen sometimes that in some types of puzzle games or even escape room games, I've had students who've said, I hate escape rooms and I just can't handle escape rooms. Um, and, and that's okay because, uh, but if that's the only thing that you offer, then I think you are denying uh, or you are create, you're creating inequity in the classroom. Uh, however, if you have different things and then they all experience it, where you have ensured that the design allows for multiple people uh, to, to prosper in, in multiple ways, what will happen is at the end, while one person may be excellent in an escape room, another person may be excellent in a board game, and another person may be excellent in a point and shoot game, for example, you will sort of end up getting uh, sort of everyone sort of feeling that they have been able to contribute to the team. Uh, and again, collaborative environments is, is where this, uh, this happens in, and I'm a big believer in that as well. So I don't know if that answers your, your question, Richard. Yeah. I could add on this uh, to defend a little bit the escape rooms concept. Uh, so basically, from what all, all of us said, uh, like all three of us uh, said that we started our project and like our cows based on emotions and personal things. So I think this is something what escape room, uh, if well designed and only well one designed, uh, like it triggers emotions. And therefore it can be used maybe less as a learning tool, but way more as a curiosity opener because escape room allows to tell a story and it's not, it cannot be done for too long. I don't know like how about you, but I hate movies which are longer than two hours. It's just too much of your concentration. So that's why most of the escape rooms are somewhere around one hour. And this is where people can actively be immersed um, and after this, if you trigger the emotions, they will be hungry to study more about the cows. Like, how do you actually solve um, this and that? Like, what, what happens if this, like, you know, this discussion after the movie? So when it's like three hours movie, there is no energy for discussion anymore. Um, so kind of this is uh, where the escape room can be used as one of the elements, not as the only, of course, there, I agree. And also when well designed, it can be, allowing different people to step in in different uh, stages of the game. I do see at least in our games that uh, some people can be quiet in the beginning, for example, because they need more time to get in. Um, but then there comes a task where they're like, ah, I know that. And that's great because the, like, uh, the light spot comes from one player to another, because of course, if they're only like math oriented tasks and you're not good at math, of course you will hate the escape room. Like, <laughs> Yeah, Mateus. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, even though it might not look like it, I think we have given a very good response to uh, to Richard, who actually did raise a very good point. And I've been listening to uh, Razif and, and Gina, and uh, I have to say that even though we have uh, different viewpoints, uh, in my view, we we completely agree. Uh, when Razif says that uh, uh, the most important thing is to make sure your learning is not weak, this is 100% consistent with my other company that works with educational publishers and, and, and does also corporate training. We always say garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> so, yeah, because we, we are the game designers, but in educational gaming, garbage in, it's, it's, uh, you're bound to get garbage out. And, and what I'm doing now, the viewpoint, uh, even though it seems different, it's exactly the same concept. You have to have a compelling game story to start with. Otherwise, again, you have garbage uh, as a starting point. And even if your learning is extremely strong, if your game story is really not interesting, again, your result will not be good. So I think the bottom line, in, in my view, is uh, for Richard, 
and for other people uh, that are looking uh, at the same direction is that th these are these are okay important points but we, I mean the, the the most important thing I think is that, that the learning is uh, component is strong and that your game story is also compelling and uh, these are very important factors and I think they come first or at least in the first years of things that uh, count yeah yeah thanks thanks a lot uh, shall we m uh, move to the next question i think eva let the uh, shall, shall we give a preference to sonia because you already asked one so just uh, to, to get more people engaged sonia please okay thank you uh for giving me the opportunity to say something <laughs> um i want to react to i think every richard but also to rajiv and also to you mateos um i think one of the things that i really like in game-based learning is that students that usually are um and i'm talking about educational games students that are usually resolving problems in a way suddenly when they have to approach a subject through game-based learning they can use and show completely different strategies and behavior than in a regular uh, classroom so I, uh, I agree with Richard that it's nice to have uh, games that um, where students can show and can use different strategies. So we don't have to design games that are um, uh, with particular learning styles in mind, but we think we can design games that give the opportunity for students to show very different behavior and strategies. So more open, open games. Because um, I also agree with Mateus, it, it's very complicated to design educational games. I um, usually I, I work with students from game design. I am from mathematics, so but we 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 do these projects uh, together, and uh, it's what we. And if you ask me what is successful as a strategy, is to try to combine the learning goals with the game goals but leave enough space for strategy so uh, that even so trying to 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 mastering the content is mastering the game but allowing the space for the player to, to arrive there to the end using all kind of different strategies so it is and it's not easy but at least it's a direction that i i think it can be fruitful to to educational game design. Yep. So as far as I understand, it was less of a question and more of a comment. Yeah. OK, Eva, maybe then the, uh, th yeah, thanks a lot. That was an absolutely valid point. And uh, Eva, uh, please unmute yourself. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, the reason why I asked the question about the, the game goal is that um, we ask students to come up with a game during our, one of the courses. They are bachelor students and uh, they are learning communication, collaboration and different kinds of uh, theories uh, to, to operate within complex problems. So for them, it's super important to understand the complexity of problems and how to deal with that. And we found that serious games are really helpful for them to achieve then a kind of different perspective. Uh, not to learn facts, but to, to have a kind of attitude change or behavior change or more understanding and, and perception. And these are also kind of, I think, the super added values of that. Um, how do you think uh, that, that escape rooms and, and these kind of collaborative games can help uh, understand complex problems? Can you, can you put these into complex problem situations? I think it's very possible through the story. Um, so you don't need to like create a game for the sake of game. It can be a game that yeah just leaves uh, players with the feeling that like, oh, this was unfair or like, oh, how can this be solved or avoided in the society? And I actually do enjoy a lot when um, like, you know, it's, I think it also triggers also this motivation and I 
like talked a lot to people who have that same problem with the students and the motivation because a lot of students are learning for now for the sake of learning for the sake of uh, grades and it's very um like it's it's an obvious connection with the reality what are they going to do with this knowledge later because then maybe you can make conscious choice that's like okay i'm not interested in this part of the course and i'm okay to get like the lowest grade like just pass uh, but I'm very curious about this because I feel like I might be working with this more. And then like, instead of just doing things for the green tick, you will be doing things uh, based on your like uh, emotions and just like that you feel that it's important to you. Like this, I'm feeling that this lacks a lot in the, like throughout the university years of the students to just understand that this is not just books learning and like getting the, the grades. I, I can also contribute as a with an example of something that uh, we've designed uh, as a to, specifically to introduce a complex problem. So that that is, uh, so there was an, uh, a project where we designed an educational collaborative game to to introduce uh, a problem of uh, tragedy of the commons, and uh, well. Doesn't matter. It's one of one of the problems that where the kind of the, the necessity of democratic solutions kind of comes into play and. Uh, and the way to do that was just to put uh, the players in the uh, in in the situation where they would all not be able to survive unless they start collaborating. So without going into too much details, they would basically be would die on Mars without food and oxygen, uh, without uh, if if they wouldn't uh, if if they would start overusing the resources available to them and uh, and uh, not. Uh, Take into account the uh, uh, like other, other groups of players. So, and this is this is something that's been quite successful in uh, making them not understand the concept, but feel the concept, or feel the need of it. So, okay, oh, that's how you do it because that's how the society works. So, I think answering your question uh, from 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 my perspective is that sometimes you just yeah you just need to recreate like a, kind of like a small simulation of that com complex problem, and of course you would have to oversimplify things, but uh, in order to be able to have a like a decent time playthrough and uh, and and not making them learn uh, a whole textbook of concepts before they jump in the game, but uh, but a lot of the complex problems they uh, well I mean they are, they are complex they are so pressing because they are real world problems that's what people are dealing with and you can simulate this kind of environment with the game. Yeah, I think if I just add there, Andre, it's while it's very. And this is one thing that I, I really like, because yes, these are complex problems and we want people to approach complex problems. One of the, um, at least one of the gaming approaches has always been, can we simplify? Um, and while I agree, we don't have to read a textbook before entering into a game, which is of course a point, it would be a pointless exercise, but I think uh, expecting the game to be able to download the entire textbook for you is also unrealistic. Um, so I think the idea has to be that the game should have enough uh, trigger points in them so that you actually want to go and read the textbook. You actually think the textbook is actually going to be quite quite interesting. Um, and 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 I think this comes back to you know uh, are textbooks then sort of um, um, let's say redundant. That's another question that one could could even ask because knowledge is is dynamic and is changing all all throughout the time. And and then I think you have to also uh, you know build in those ideas of 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 open world or open accesses where you can actually still have um, build things where people can still do something and contribute and, and maybe extend the knowledge that that's already out there. Um, but I think, you know, it's, it, it's a tough balance. And if we don't focus on, 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 on having this balance, uh, we, we will not end up solving a lot of these complex issues. I mean, just because they are very complex issues, if we really simplify them too much, we will also, uh, unfortunately simplify the complexity that's there so so that's why I, I'm, I'm talking about this balance of, of you know ensuring that the complexity is not thrown out of the window when designing so. yeah and some, sometimes uh, you see complexity especially in this massive multiplayer online games some complexity complex complexity actually grows naturally from the players interaction and and this is uh, sometimes it's really beautiful to see. It's kind of an organic process. I think Mi Minecraft is a really beautiful example of that. And maybe Mateus, I, I actually that's the question that I wanted to ask from the beginning of the um, 
uh, of this conversation and I see no raised hands, so I'll j j just jump in. So I understand that you're using Minecraft a lot as a tool and uh, maybe I misunderstood what you said, but I feel like the, the Minecraft is also kind of the basis for this uh, product that you're developing right now. Is, is that true? Yeah, we're doing. Uh, no. We're actually doing several things on uh, on Minecraft, and the, the, what I spoke about is uh, one of the. Okay, at the moment it's experimental because we have not released it yet, but we plan to release uh, a full game on Minecraft, complete mm -hmm. game, and shortly after, an educational game based on the uh, on the game, and this is something we will be doing for the first time to see how it's going to work. Uh, but we are also using Minecraft because uh, we were talking, uh, people were talking now for complex concepts and how we can use games to deliver these complex uh, learning concepts and everything. And um, uh, I want to add here also that apart from complex concepts, uh, we have to ensure that, um, you know, games are, um, can be, uh, are not boring. They can be changed all the time. So what we do is, we also have uh, packages of uh, escape rooms in Minecraft, which are templated. So for example, 30 escape room templates that uh, uh, teachers can change every time the learning uh, component of the escape room and, and tweak the escape room so that they change it all the time and they can reuse them and reuse them and they feel comfortable with them. And they can use the escape room for more complex concepts because complex concepts are difficult to embed in a full game. But escape rooms can be used in this regard in Minecraft to teach more complex concepts to kids, and they can be they can also be changed by uh, teachers. Uh, I just want to add a simple point. I was going to write it. Uh, it has something to do with the discussion on the chat. That uh, in my view, uh, games should uh, only be used for uh, delivering a lasting effect for the important uh, bits of knowledge, and not for encapsulating complete textbooks. Uh, for example, as you spoke about IP, uh, you can use a game to communicate the basics like what a trademark is and what you can register as a trademark and what you cannot register as a trademark and things like that. But then complex knowledge like first publication and things like that is something you should refer to a textbook. It's not part of the game to communicate these concepts. And this is where we, we need to be very strict on where to draw the line and uh, actually create an, an engaging game. And uh, I think this is one of the most important things game designers uh, have to uh, have to consider where to stop uh, and uh, actually uh, use the game to really communicate uh, in a way that is going to have a, a, a lasting effect. I mean, uh, especially kids in our, in our situation, we remember it forever. If they play a game, they will always remember, even if they end up, which they will end up doing something completely different in their life, but they will always know that uh, uh, you can register as a trademark uh, this, but you cannot register that, for example. So if they want to start a business tomorrow, uh, they will already know some basic things about IP and why it is important to, to uh, register a trademark and not and things like that. So I don't know. I'm just you know uh, speaking out loud about uh, uh, what uh, what games are in my view and what they are not. And uh, sometimes I think we are losing the, the the forest. We're just looking staring at the tree to uh, you know. Yeah. All the time. And yeah. Explain a little bit about how reusable escape rooms on your platform work. Uh, yeah, we have, um, for example, we have a, a series of uh, escape rooms, which are a virtual representation of a museum mm -hmm. and a STEM museum in this regard. So the uh, different parts of the an escape room can be used for uh, delivering um, knowledge about different physics experiments. And then teachers can change a little bit uh, the, the questions or the, 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 uh, the, the actual uh, plot where you can uh, uh, get a key to open a case and then with the, you know to, to forward the, the thing forward. I mean, it cannot be changed 100% of course, but it, it's very nice because one escape room they can use for three, four different uh, physics concepts every time. And children can also co-create, which is also something very important. And they can uh, use parts of the escape room inside Minecraft to dis design their own escape room. So we, we work with these concepts. And uh, now I was not planning on speaking about this, 
But again, this is something that we are uh, very uh, much experimental and we are among the first that are trying to do this. We are trying to bridge uh, Minecraft education with the physical world. Create a bridge uh, for physical computing so the escape room can work uh, with things on the physical world. So uh, when you, for example, uh, answer all the questions or manage to find the conditions to escape a room and you get a key and you open the case and you pull the lever, in the physical uh, world, the lever can do something actually and vice versa. For example, the lever can uh, shoot a missile that exists through a circuit in the physical world and the kids can play on and off. So we're also combining the escape rooms with physical computing through Minecraft. Again, experimenting uh, uh, with new things, kind of. So, sorry, I'm just talking too much. No, well, that's what this panel is all about. Thanks, Mateus. This is actually super interesting. I'd love to talk more about that maybe be, like be, beyond this panel. But for now, we have five minutes left for uh, for the conversation, and I wanted to touch on a, like an, one very important topic that I think ever raised in the chat. I will just read her question out loud, and then we'll see uh, uh, what we can what we can say about that. So her question is, would it be possible for your companies to get input from students, game ideas, problem ideas, et cetera? And I think that's the very important point because uh, the I think that's something that influence, influences learners' motivation a lot. Like the fact that if they can actually take part in the, in, in the design of the game or like contribute to it or change something about it. So something that uh, depends on them. That's I think that's that's kind of like a pro prove one of the proven uh, uh, boost boosts boosters for the motivation. And uh, I was wondering uh, what's your experience with that, and whether you are factoring this in uh, any of your games. Maybe Zeno or Rajiv. Mm. Yeah, I'll pass it to Rajiv and give it another thought. Yeah, I mean it's. Um... For me, a lot of times, uh, like getting inclusive design is, is, is always, uh, it's challenging also because um, how much uh, time do you want it and is it continuously iterating all throughout? So that's, uh, that, that, that's also, but I do agree that this kind of student feedback and, and student involvement is, is really essential. Um, but I think um, one of the things one has to keep in mind is there are two audiences when there's a learning game involved. One is the teacher, the other is the student. And there's a certain set of teacher needs that have to be met and a certain set of uh, uh, student needs that also have to be met. And um, the teacher will understand more of the student needs by asking the student, but I think uh, the uh, not necessarily the student, especially sometimes understands the teacher's needs as well. So, um, so I think that's uh, that's why when you design a certain game, maybe there should be a time in which one can incorporate this, um, and and then you can de design it from there. Um, though I think from a more practical perspective, and and having run this also as as a, as a business, if, for example, what I have learned is that while it's a very ideal thought to have you know, that students can contribute and come up with, with ideas. Um, practically, it's very expensive to actually uh, deploy this because you have, that means you have to add a new feature, test it, you know, play test it again. So it, it's it's going to be very, uh, very uh, sort of expensive. On the other hand, you could build an open world system where the students can come up with their own co uh, contributions and you can measure that. But these kind of open world systems that maybe things like Roblox or the others already have, they are able to do it because they are very expensively designed from the start and that infrastructure is already there. So if you use that, that's okay. But if you want to design it from scratch, an open world system is very, very difficult and complex to design. Matthias. Yeah, I just, just want to say that Rajiv is, is spot on uh, in my view also. It is actually uh, expensive. And he, he mentioned also roadblocks and we, uh, uh, we also have some advantages by using uh, Minecraft uh, to be able to engage with students. But we, as a company, we only we are only able to do this through some Erasmus Plus projects that can bring us uh, in contact with uh, students. So we have um, we have quite a few Minecraft uh, Erasmus Plus projects where the way we start them now 
is uh, we uh, start the project by uh, asking the, the school kids to create stories in Minecraft. So we uh, completely explain the project through a Minecraft demo we make, and then they make their own stories. And then we take elements from their own stories and we create a, a final project there. So it would be very expensive for us. Uh, we don't have the resources all the time, basically the time as a company to engage with a lot of students, but through these kinds of projects, we can actually uh, get the opportunity to engage with, uh, with uh, students and filter out things which are interesting and incorporate them in our uh, uh, game ideas uh, later on. So that's my uh, that's my contribution here. Yeah, I feel that um, like the like with, from my not that broad experience with students, it needs some pre work where you explain to students how expensive that gets. Uh, that they actually like, you know, feel almost like internal competition. I wouldn't probably even engage that much competition, but sort of try to deliver them the message that, you know, you really want to uh, put some effort in this and not, uh, yeah, kind of, you know, if you don't have anything to say, don't. Um, like I've, I've seen really nice input from the students, but usually they also... They don't understand that this can be part of the real world. So sometimes they do give you like a reply um, to say something. Um, so kind of if there is this pre-work that makes them understand that this can be put into reality, I think then there you can really get nice results. And if I just very quickly can add, and we're running out of time here, but if um, one of the things that when I built, for example, what the, the eShip Navigating Uncertainty board game, we uh, had uh, multiple players play it across three years and every time we kept getting feedback and you know we would take that into account change it and see but on average we decided at some point that okay i think we have gotten we have saturated the feedback that we could get uh, we have gotten all the ideas that we can but at some point we have to draw the line and say i think at this point we should not take further feedback because we'll keep getting that feedback as you go on unless you design the tool to be completely open-ended uh, which will, again would be very difficult to 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 create of course Thank you. Yeah, that, that that's great. And I think this conversation could have gone like much longer. I'm pretty sure about that. But unfortunately, we are running out of time here. We already one minute past. So I'd like to <clears throat> I'd like to say a big thank you to to the panelists. Uh, that's yeah, I think that for me, that was really interesting and valuable. And I hope for the audience as well. And of course, feel free to shoot questions at them. I'm sure that they will be uh, kind enough to uh, to answer some of them or, what, or, or, or all of them. And with this, I wish you a very pleasant rest of the day and the rest of the conference. And I hope to see you in one of the other sessions. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Uh, Thank Destina, you. if you want to say something else for uh, on practical Thank side, uh, please, this is your moment. Uh, yeah, thank you so much also from my side. Thank you for, for participating. I think I'm very happy that I had a few questions that either they were covered or we didn't have time for them. <laughs> so good. Uh, uh, also, if you are, if you want, please put your emails in the chat if somebody really wants to, to reach out to you if they're trying something similar and they would like, like your and you 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 are like maybe they could drop you a line uh, if you are open to that. Um so uh, with that said, I think uh, this uh, we we finalized the session, so we are moving uh, to the next session. And uh, for whoever wants to participate in uh, the workshop, uh, it's like uh, escape rooms as a creative solutions to tackle complex challenges, which also draws like in some of the topics that we discuss now. Stay in this track, otherwise um in the website like in the dashboard you you can go to day two and then you can click on the it's, there is a new link for track two day two so please go there if you are interested in good practice case presentations on collaborative and practical education so for whoever really wants to continue with um the workshop i will pass the baton to paula uh, if, yeah, uh, Paula, so maybe you can, uh, yeah, and whoever wants, you can like go. Um, thank you so much again to, to the panel. And uh, yeah, I hope like uh, to see you soon in other talks or events. That was super, super interesting. Me.
Bye bye. Uh, good morning. <laughs> For me, it's good morning. <laughs> it's too early in Brazil, but okay. <laughs> uh, good morning. Uh, I, I will uh, show uh, a process that I, I, I built in the, my, uh, our escape rooms. And uh, uh, now you, you show uh, and, uh, and uh, show and uh, give uh, another. Uh, many examples for for uh, what uh, how we think uh, how we, you build our escape rooms and uh, I I show uh, at the end I I show us uh, our um, platform and put a, a, a samples to to discuss in the the, the breaking rooms okay uh, this is a, the the that's a work, uh, okay. Uh, the the main focus for the, the this the, the the workshop is how uh, how the 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 escape rooms uh, uh, how create escape rooms that uh, we think a a, a way to to uh, give uh, uh, subjects and uh, uh, attitudes, uh, emancipatory and creative, okay? It's difficult uh, uh, to think about because uh, uh, many uh, platforms or uh, uh, passwords or uh, are uh, the, 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 uh, the tools uh, are too reactive. Okay, uh, you, you have a, a give a password, you have a give a answer, a, a, a right answer, uh, and it's difficult to, to think things that uh, is more creative, is more. But uh, I think that the the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the complexity of education uh, needs to, to build uh, games that. Uh, 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 Build this complexity, okay? And uh, I, I try to, to explain how uh, we work with this and uh, inspire and uh, exchange experience with uh, you, okay? Uh, that's uh, I try to, to put my 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 presentation, okay? And uh, mm. Just a minute, please. Uh, so. Let me, uh, Paola, do you need? I can make you. Let me see. Oh, okay, you can. It's okay. That's okay. So, make your co host in any case. Good. Can you see? I'll put the presentation. Yeah. Let, let, so let's. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> oh. Just a moment, please. <laughs> Only a little too many, many. Uh, I'm working in Brazil and uh, uh, and uh, we, uh, I, I will told you uh, escape room that uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm a build I'm in 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 building not finished yet about Paul Freire uh, do you do you know Paul Freire is a, a, a important education in Brazil and uh, uh, I chose Paul Freire because uh, he he told uh, about emancipatory education and uh, uh, in Brazil because the uh, politics problems uh, people uh, that there, there were many 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 uh, there are many many fake news about Paulo Freire people uh, told uh, things and uh, we uh, we are building a, a, a escape room about this, 
to to overcome this fake news okay and uh, it's a, 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 a example that we will we'll show okay oh i just meant okay Não consigo ir para o começo, só. Ok. Ok. Só, só. Sorry. For, for example. Mm. Then uh, our, uh, our theme is creative and unsatisfactory learning with escape room. Okay, uh, this is a framework, uh, a theoretical framework uh, developed for Okada. Uh, uh, Okada is a Brazilian research, but uh, she, is, uh, she works in Open University in the UK. Uh, and um, uh, we, uh, we participate in a project uh, about fun learning and uh, the, the the dipping of fun, not uh, and uh, she develops this framework that the the the, the theoretical framework about uh, education, and uh, she uh, said that uh, for for the mention for for fun, uh, a fun to uh, to develop skills and uh, understand your challenges, the fun to, to uh, work with problems and uh, overcome few productive, uh, solve problems. Uh, it's an individual fun. Uh, after the collaborative fun, learning which another, share experience, and the fun to uh, intervene, to, to participate for a social uh, experience. Then uh, uh, I think you 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 have to to create uh, games that uh, engage people to think about your uh, context, think about your your problem, uh, the social problems, think about your life. Your it's important to, to uh, connect the fan fan with these things, okay? Uh, it's the principle that uh, we, we talk about, okay? Uh, and uh, about creative learning, uh, we uh, think about the, 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 the uh, MIT, uh, Riznik, that uh, uh, think that the, 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 the four piece project, the, uh, how people project things, how people share ideas, peer, uh, how people uh, discover another things, uh, patient, and uh, learning uh, by experimentation, playing, learning by playing. Um, then uh, the creative gamification, which is important to, 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 to do for a creative gamification. Uh, I work with uh, uh, scenarios. I, I, I love to create good scenarios and good narrative experience. I think you, you, we have uh, um, invest in good scenarios to explore and good scenarios to, 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 to good stories, okay? Uh, another thing is project, um, uh, how uh, can I uh, work with proje uh, projects in escape rooms? Uh, uh, one have models to people choose or models to people compare uh, uh, and uh, think about uh, what can uh, improve these models. Uh, and uh, people, uh, uh, the free experimentation, discover things, discover, uh, free exploring, uh, curiosity, uh, propose naming, fun lane, uh, uh, authorship, uh, people authorship and escape room. Uh, we uh, 
I, I understand that the, the many of uh, solutions are, are programmed, but uh, it's possible to uh, tell about, to, to, to think about, to reflection about, uh, okay, and uh, uh, invite to, to discover things uh, or uh, to uh, choose uh, 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 solutions about so, uh, social responsibility, okay? And uh, for example, the nar narrative, uh, how we, we build the narrative. Uh, we, we discover, uh, I love to, 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 to create narratives about uh, research histories and facts that really exist, but create uh, <laughs> fictional uh, characters to, to, uh, to interact. For example, uh, now in Brazil, I, 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 I will uh, I, I'm creating a, a game about uh, Brazil independence and uh, it's, it's too controversial in the independence of Brazil. And uh, we uh, collect facts about independence and create another character to, to interact with this, uh, to uh, evidence the social problems of Brazil. Okay, uh, racism and uh, homophobia uh, uh, and problems, uh, 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 gender problems, and uh, about the, the, the invented uh, characters, uh, invented histories. To to, but uh, we have to uh, uh, to to do correlations and and the. the discover things and uh, they invented then the no negotiation just this narratives okay and uh, uh, the narratives that the people do and the, the people uh, build the people tell about uh, your uh, your own histories okay uh, it's important uh, in education uh, 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 after the escape room, the experience of escape room, uh, 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 discuss or uh, uh, do activities to understand, to, uh, to uh, learn, to deepen learning about the, the, the experience and to understand uh, the value actions, the uh, uh, symbolic elements that you put in your escape room, uh, understand their activity or the competition on the strategies of uh, uh, people, uh, uh, problematize the choices that people do, uh, organize elements that the people uh, put and uh, how they organize in, in escape room. Uh, uh, discuss the uh, collaboration uh, and uh, many things about this. Um, I've, uh, sorry, <laughs> it's in Portuguese. The the the, the invitation. Uh, I, I now uh, put the elements that you build the the, the, the escape rooms. Uh, first is is the invitation. Uh, how invite people to enter in the escape room. Uh, okay, and uh, what are the, 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 for example, it's uh, this escape room that uh, is sold is an escape room that I did in, in a museum, in a Brazilian museum, uh, about uh, uh, is a, a, a old uh, old build that was a, a palace, uh, but now is a, a science museum. And the, uh, the, the history of the palace, the many, many things uh, that was a uh, legislative uh, house, uh, was a uh, prison, uh, many things this, uh, happened in this palace, okay? And people, uh, the escape room, in the escape room, people had to discover what happened and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, feel, uh, uh, a, a narrative, discover the narrative that you, uh, person that uh, built the 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 the, uh, the, the, uh, the work in the building uh, 
and discover his story, his story, okay? To, and in the end, uh, um, people uh, have to choose if the, 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 the building is important for the society or not. And the, the, the invitation, this invitation, the, 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 uh, the actor is, was an actor, uh, ask, well, I'm an engineer and uh, we intend to, uh, to uh, destroy this, this building and uh, construct another, another thing. And you have to, to decide is it's important uh, maintain this, this building or not. Uh, it's an escape room about uh, uh, social patrimony, okay? Uh, 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 for example, uh, the invitation that our escape about uh, Paulo Freire that we, we, uh, we was built, has building as uh, that, that uh, hacker inv uh, inv inv invasion, uh, trap inside the fake fake room, fake news. You have to 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 discover what's uh, what's fake, what's not fake. To uh, uh, think about to uh, to to to, uh, to live. Okay, it's, it's important. Uh, I think our uh, the the dynamics and the, the mechanics of escape room. You have to to uh, to uh, try uh, to discover an emergence, and you have uh, you have to escape from everything, from every, everywhere. Okay, and uh, 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 for building the, the, the for building the escape room, you use reference tests, inspiration narratives, and other escapes and other games, and uh, many resources that you inside in this for example uh, uh, the, the 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 escape room in this palace uh, we we found the uh, photos for uh, prison photos for uh, uh inspiration the 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 the, 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 the beauty okay uh, and from paulo freire escape room that i i Uh, what uh, uh, what uh, uh, we 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 did? It's important uh, uh, mapping the controversies. What I, I did, uh, I I research more than ten communities that uh, told uh, told things about uh, uh, Paulo Freire and uh, uh, collect many 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 fake news and. Uh, uh, mapping uh, a research, a qualitative map to, 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 and I build the, 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 the narratives and the, uh, the challenges about these things. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's important. When I, 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 I build an escape room, I try to build about a problem, a controversy, for example, uh, I built a face, uh, 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 a face uh, escape home about uh, um, relation uh, teacher uh, student uh, uh, about the uh, uh, about the the the, the functionary uh, the the uh, workers uh, the, uh, teachers and non teachers in at university because they have a contro many controversies. And uh, how uh, is my building process uh, to try to, to uh, do a, a research, interviews, and uh, uh, questionnaires, and use the answers for the, the, the interviews to, uh, to build the narratives and to build the, 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 the challenges, OK? Uh, uh, in in uh, Paulo Freire controversy, uh, Social media uh, institutes archives, many photos and many uh, texts for Paulo Freire, and burning archives because uh, uh, the 
the government in Brazil uh, erasing many, many materials, uh, government materials about Paulo Freire. And uh, uh, it's a, a, a clue to put in, in, in the, the, into the, the, the escape room, okay? And videos too. Uh, it's important to uh, every escape room, we, we have to, to need a, a urgency, okay? Uh, a time or uh, uh, to have to, how, how many time you have to, 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 to escape, okay? Uh, I think it's important, uh, a time uh, counter <laughs> to, to, uh, to, to understand how I, I escape room, okay? Uh, okay, emergence, sorry. Uh, uh, what you can show uh, uh, contradictions, argumentative fallacies, uh, generalizations, personal. So, uh, every, uh, uh, for example, uh, about the, 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 the Paulo Freire, uh, we are building uh, four scenarios about a connection, your life and your work, uh, and, and a ped pedagogy of, of oppressed, uh, and this a scenario, the prison, uh, because Paulo Freire, uh, it's done in prison. Uh, another the so, social moment, movements, uh, the communication, pedagogy of uh, autonomy uh, at university. You, uh, uh, the scenario is he was um, at university that uh, uh, he worked, and uh, uh, the last scenario is pedagogy of hope. Uh, this the how to to to. Uh, to escape from the, the, the bubble, okay? And uh, relationships with their life, uh, use manuscripts, uh, use uh, jour, uh, journals, use uh, newspaper, images, photos, okay? Uh, objects that you put in, in escape room, so padlocks and codes, objects uh, uh, like boxes, boxes and uh, uh, time capsules, I use many, many uh, uh, things about this. Uh, passwords, codex, padlocks, uh, pad uh, personal objects. I use many, many to, uh, because objects uh, are narrative, uh, uh, inside the narratives. Uh, narratives, objects, uh, uh, diaries, uh, uh, log uh, books, okay. Uh, it's important to problematization, contradiction, uh, conflict, uh, uh, emotional things, uh, uh, empathy, okay. Uh, invite to explore, explore uh, if physical uh, escape room, explore uh, texts, uh, explore maps, explore images, explore text. Uh, uh, okay, explore uh, objects this day, and uh, we uh, build uh, abstract images. Okay, uh, I I show uh, just a moment. Uh, I show uh, uh, I use uh, this is the problem now. Okay, thing link. Uh, to build scenarios, I use this platform, ThingLink, okay? Uh, I will show, I don't know if you, you feel possible to, to, to because we have to, to, to enter in, in the, the, but I show uh, how I, I create the scenarios and uh, it's important to, if, uh, now uh, the, the activity, uh, with uh, doing in, in breaking rooms, I think uh, 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 escape room uh, that the theme is 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 uh, the theme uh, is social and uh, uh, and the uh, theme. But uh, uh, I showed that the, the, the 
the scenarios that I, I can, we can uh, do. Just a moment. Do you, do you need me? Can you make um? Can you make the rules, or shall I make them? Okay. Uh, sorry. Huh? Uh, shall I make the breakout rooms, or like, do you want me to make them, or do you have access to okay. make? Okay. Uh, uh, just a moment. I show. Okay. Uh, and, okay. Uh, sorry. Sorry. I, I, no, I, I I need the help. <laughs> but uh, okay. Let's just show how we, if people uh, have questions now uh, uh, before the, 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 the activity, uh, if, you, if you tell, tell uh, can you ask questions, sorry. Um, yeah, maybe like if uh, for the people that they're here and they're uh, like, maybe it will help like if you open your camera, so um, it could be also easier for Paula to see who is actively participating. Nobody? Uh, I show uh, how uh, we build a, a scenario, for example. Uh, this scenario is a, a, a Google, Google Street View Im image. It, uh, I, uh, this, this platform thing link, uh, you, uh, it's possible, let's show. Uh, uh, it's possible to create scenarios, okay. Uh, and you have created only images or using uh, three, uh, uh, 360 uh, uh, images. It's possible to put uh, videos, many, many things. I, I, I like to, uh, I like to use uh, scenarios uh, from uh, Google Street View. It's possible to, to uh, to download the, 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 the images the, and put them in this, in this uh, the, for example, I have many scenarios uh, uh, I create to, uh, and in this platform, you can uh, choose the scenarios to have a, a, a library for many scenarios. Oh, uh, so uh, I will show how to, to, to uh, for example, this scenario. Uh, you can put the things to, uh, in the scenario. Uh, to create escape room isn't interesting. Uh, and uh, it's possible to edit, and uh, you put uh, and uh, uh, can you put uh, media? Uh, uh, can put uh, multimedia things, uh, videos, images, uh, and uh, it's possible to put many clues and then images. And is is very good for for uh, create escape rooms because you put uh, things uh, and the, the icons uh, their icons uh, almost uh, transparent uh, uh, invisible. <laughs> it's important to explore image. I think it's important in in, in escape room to create a, a, a environment to explore. Okay. Uh, it's possible to uh, create a, a label, only a label, not 
a media, it's possible to uh, put, uh, to embed uh, forms. I, I, I used to embed a Mentimeter uh, or uh, a questionnaire in, in the scenario. In another scenario, uh, people see the, the answers that uh, than other people is, is interested to, to do, okay? And uh, 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 I put another, uh, for example, uh, what the uh, uh, word cross or uh, games, reactive games as a, a, a found things and it, it's put uh, it's possible to select another scenario that you have for example and people can uh, change the scenario if if it, it puts a, con a conditional transition and put a, a question okay and, uh, and it's possible to change the scenario for create escape homes is, is very good uh, just just uh, but uh, I, I use this 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 platform uh, uh, to do many 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 escape rooms okay uh, that's it uh, so, uh, let me ask something um so basically like you have this um you download the photo from the Google Maps. Excuse and then, me. So, huh? uh, so you download the photo, the 360 uh, image from the Google Maps, and then in ThinkLink, you basically put prompts for yes, the... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It's, uh, we have, uh, uh, in Chrome, uh, have an extension at Google Chrome, that you can download the 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 the, the, the uh, called uh, Panofetch. Uh, Panofetch is a uh, uh, oh. Panofetch. Uh, just uh, it? It, it, it's a, a, a Panofetch. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a, 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 a Chrome extension, mm -hmm. and you put in, in map Google Maps and. Uh, it downloads it. Okay. It downloads the image and you you, you upload in thing link and uh, create your scenarios. Mm -hmm. I use uh, it so much. Uh, it's interesting to, to create a, a game in, in the world. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, so, uh, okay. Yeah, because uh, it looks like it's online, but it, it's like you are there. So you kind of take yes, yes, advantage yes. of the of the yes, screen, yes. like in a in a better, uh, uh, better way. For example, okay. this is a, 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 a I, I do as a park in Brazil in São Paulo, mm -hmm. okay, uh, and uh, I put uh, I don't know things to people discover as uh, uh, to the so, uh, uh, this, for example, uh, this uh, this is in, in fingling things. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. It's about games. I I, I do a, a, a escape rooms about uh, games. It's a scenario. Uh, this uh, uh, get, uh, in ThinkLink, you have many, many scenarios uh, free for free. No, uh, people uh, can open projects, open projects, and can clone the projects that people uh, put in open and uh, use. Okay. So it's a, for example, this, this room is a game room and uh, open project, and you use it to uh, how the scenario. Okay. And, uh, okay. Now, uh, uh, I I put uh, the, the only moment uh, the jump board uh, think uh, that we 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 talk about uh, to think uh, uh, we use a jump board to to think about the elements in the escape room uh, emotion factory okay and I I I I, I will uh, in in in. Uh, that that explain that I that I did because uh, is is better. On a minute, okay. 
Uh, okay. Sorry. Actually, I can. Nita. Bom. Bom, não. Só um minutinho. Vou compartilhar minha tela aqui. Aqui tem tanta. Hum, aqui. Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, the 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 challenges. Uh, uh, to think about uh, 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 I, how create escape room uh, about a, a controversy, a uh, uh, social controversy, a problem social, uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, I, 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 I invite you to, to, to think. Uh, the term of, of escape room, uh, which controversy, which narratives can, can you uh, build about this? Uh, which, uh, uh, how can uh, create the urgency? Okay, uh, people, uh, we trap in, in how place, uh, where, where they, they trap it, what the, uh, or, they have to escape about what, okay? Uh, uh, invitation to, to, to think things uh, and uh, which scenarios, which technologies. Uh, think about uh, 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 the, 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 the group are discuss uh, 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 escape idea, escape idea, uh, uh, only the concept idea from escape room, to uh, to problematize uh, so, uh, any social problems uh, and uh, uh, try to to, to to think about which controversies uh, uh, about the controversy with narratives uh, kind of urgence invitation for for discuss to to uh, escape uh, scenarios and uh, which technologies uh, for example technologies uh, if you use uh, 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 Google Slides, if you use a uh, 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 link, link, if you use a Geniali, uh, which technology can you use to create this escape room? Okay, okay? Uh, it's a, a conceptual uh, uh, exercise. Okay, understand? It's clear. I can. Uh, I mean, I will join you. I mean. Maybe we can do it because I don't know, like it's uh, if people are not reactive. Uh, Oi? Hi. If people are not reactive. I think uh, it doesn't make sense to make um, breakout rooms, right? Okay. We can okay. all do it like in this okay. group because. Um, okay. Uh, it's going to be. Uh, Can you uh, create this case, the, the breaking rules? Sorry? 
Uh, can you, you can you create the the, the breaking rules now? I can yes. Uh, how many shall I make? I'm just I'm just not sure. Like okay, I can make them. Okay. Uh, I'm just like I'm proposing if we can all work in this group because uh, I'm just. Okay. Um, I'm just like, I'm worrying that like people, I don't know why people are not reactive, but um, um, yeah, maybe we can all, or I can make a skip, like how many breakout rooms shall I make? Oh no, or not, we, we can, uh, okay, uh, I put the, the jam board and people, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's possible to 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 feel individually, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, I, I I create the jam board. We uh, have many many. Uh, it, it, okay, and uh, we stay here. No problem, no problem. I try to to to. I try to to do and people uh, answers uh, do individually. Okay, I I I I, I show and uh, okay, no problem. For example, uh, I show. Uh, For example, like what what kind of controversy? Yes. Um, yes. Can you can you suggest something? For, uh, I I show and people can uh, try to 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 do. Uh, I think yeah. it's, it's better. Okay. Okay. Uh, just a moment. Uh, uh, put my uh, for example, and th and there are many uh, uh, there are many many uh, I I put in, in the first and can uh, and you can choose another another pages. Okay, you have uh, mm -hmm. five, five pages or or put, put more. Okay. Okay. So shall we write in the like in the, in the there? Excuse me. Shall we write there below the? Um... Yes. Yes. Okay. People can can write. Oh, for example, put a a, a, a note. Okay. Uh, uh yeah, nice. Okay, I didn't know about this. Uh... And uh, uh, for example, controversy, Brazil independence. I, but however, I know nothing about Brazil independence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, for uh, example, I mean, I do, but it's not maybe like I'm not. Um, okay, okay. I think uh, it's a very. Um, uh, 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 maybe we can do like a topic that is very more global, right? Oh. Uh, For Gonzalo, I know Gonzalo that he's from uh, Portugal. Um, okay, very close. Actually. No, the problem Brazil, is Brazil, very, yes. Uh, uh, but it, uh, okay, yes, okay. yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, the problem, uh, but uh, uh, it's a, 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 a big controversy, but for example, uh, I use the, the same, the same, uh, for example, the same problem, but uh, in, in uh, for example, uh, uh, um, right. sorry, um, one moment. I can't, like, it looks uh, like uh, I don't have access no. Um, we can only view the file. We can't make uh, changes. So maybe yeah, if you change. Fine. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Editor. Um, yeah, sorry. No. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. For example. Nice. Uh, so. Uh, so maybe. Mm, 
and in the urgency is like making it uh making it like that that everybody cares right yes Um, okay, I added the note. I'm not sure if like this is exactly. Oh. Okay, I have a question. Like in the urgency, we um we really make the issue, we make it urgent so the participants really understand that it's that they should care, right? So then the urgency uh, is the 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 so I, I'm like in my mind is like okay like join so you can learn more to help your neighbors and friends is something like racism is not something really um, no, no, no. big uh, and or it this is it, I think it's uh, uh, we understand urgence for the, the 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 it's like a controversy it's like the the the, the theme is uh, uh, the the content that uh, you understand it's urgence to, to discuss. Uh, in the escape room, the urgence is uh, how can uh, create the, the, the because uh, uh, the mechanic of escape room, you have a time, you have a time, a time run, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, why you have to, 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 to uh, the, the, the narrative, we have uh, to to build a uh, uh, a time that you you have to escape. Okay, for mm -hmm. example, uh, if uh, if you're you're trapped in in a, in a, in, a, in a room, you have to 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 people come or, or uh, uh, for example, uh, I I I just escape room about uh, the the. Uh, Hitchcock, uh, the Hitchcock uh, history about uh, the psychosis, psycho, psycho, the film psycho, and uh, we we trap in the Bates Motel and the, the the room, mm -hmm. and you have uh, five minutes to escape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because okay. the Norman Bates <laughs> come back, okay, uh, and they have a year years. The, uh, for example, uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, create a uh, 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 yeah. uh, excuse to 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 to. Uh, for example, you have uh, forty minutes because uh, uh, after this happen uh, every every escape room uh, we have a time uh, a time run. Okay, yeah. uh, this is the the. the uh, uh, it's difficult to create uh, the time room, but it, it's possible. For example, uh, uh, I use uh, many excuses. For example, uh, you, you are uh, trapped in a, in, a, in a game. You have uh, uh, for 40 minutes to, to escape to, to the game is over. Or, or, for example, the, ra uh, the hacker, uh, uh, the hacker system or uh, or, uh, for example, I, I did the escape room about uh, in this in, in the classroom. Uh, you have uh, uh, forty minutes uh, before the 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 director or, or the teacher come back to the room, and you have to to discover the, the mystery mm -hmm. in 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 this time. Okay, understand? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. So it has to be something like really. Um, okay, so, our, okay, then our topic, I think maybe it's too... <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's, yeah. let, uh, I, I will do an ex example, for example. Uh, the controversies. Uh, 
uh, uh, escape room that I did about this. Uh, the teachers, students. Students, uh, 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 I can't, 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 I was uh, it could be like um uh, like a stu the the student yeah. have to save the teacher or something otherwise they will all fail yes, yes. Uh, teacher have problem and uh, students This uh, is right. For example, uh, uh. The invitation, uh, the 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 uh, uh, students listen uh, conversation uh, and uh, uh, try. No problem. Uh, this escape room was very, very good. Was very interesting. Uh, I, I did a, a escape room about uh, the uh, teacher and uh, uh, students, um, uh, the relationship. Uh, first, to 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 mapping the controversies, we uh, uh, we listen students about this. What problem? Uh, uh, what problem with classroom? And uh, listen, teachers to uh, your problems to to, to teach and the, the, the conflict. Okay, and I I, I did many many uh, questionnaires and uh, about the answers I built the the the, 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 the the narrative, and then in the narrative uh, we have many problems. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, that uh, teacher uh, have in the, the, the in their, uh, quotidian, okay, and uh, uh, the students have to discover if the uh, that uh, if the the, pro, uh, the the teacher was guilty or not about uh, uh, accusations uh, that the. Uh, uh, students did for uh, for for him uh, then uh, uh, they discovered that uh, things that the teacher have uh, any guilt and most of not the, the problem natural problems for the the situations uh, quotidian situation and the end the the the, the students uh, are invited to to, to uh, decide if you defend the, 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 the teacher or not. And it was a uh, very good the discussions because every, every group defends the teachers and understand the, uh, their 
their, uh, her prob uh, his problems and was uh, very interesting to discuss things. And they did many, many escape rooms uh, in this, uh, with this thematic to discuss uh, uh, problems uh, uh, between a key, uh, between uh, workers, uh, the, the science works and technical works. Uh, it's so, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, think, uh, it is, uh, I think it's diff difficult to understand uh, my English, sorry, and uh, uh, my reality. But uh, uh, what I, I, I intend to show uh, you uh, at, uh, is the, the kind of build the, 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 the escape room uh, to, to create a narrative, create a propose about a, 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 a social controversy, social problems, and uh, the, the narrative and the, the, uh, we have to, to, to build, to people think about, people discover things, uh, uh, to to uh, uh, to to, do, to to think about how to overcome these challenges. Okay, uh, uh, you understand? Uh, yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, these are these six categories uh, are mainly like things to think in designing uh, the escape room. So it is. Like exactly, so it triggers an important conversation. Like as we said before in the panel that basically an escape room is, is the bait, is like the hook um, to get people uh, discussing about, like starting to think about something and like out of a place of curiosity or, um, and then they can care more or like it's a, big, it's a starting point, right? So basically inviting them and then creating a controversy for them to, to get into thinking, okay, the urgency, yes, it's um, like, why do they have to escape uh, the narrative uh, in this sense? Okay, the narrative now is the general narrative. For example, in this uh, situation with the teacher and the student, what would be a scenario? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we have uh, many, many, many uh, uh, it's, it was uh, interesting that the, the results that we, uh, we have in, in Brazil for, for this kind of escapes to, to think about uh, re, uh, real problems, okay? To think about real problems or not uh, i'm sorry to 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 try to to but uh for example I think like if you say an example would help yeah like if you kind of make it specific i think it will help okay uh i try to choose to show an, another examples put another 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 uh just a minute so to understand So sorry. So, only minutes, please. I, I show uh, in my presentation yesterday, but uh, I think it, it's interesting to to understand um, another. Um, Uh, 
I think it's, it's important to, 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 to show. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, image is for the escape room, for the classroom, and uh, for the, the uh, uh, escape classroom that people, uh, the, uh, the students have to dis discover things about the teacher and uh, uh, they discover many things about the, the history. Uh, this is, Another escape room. Uh, uh, this is in, in, into the museum. And uh, we discover things about the museum, the problems. Uh, uh, this museum uh, is a, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, images for the, the museum. This museum, uh, not uh, ah, okay, here. Uh, this museum uh, is a, a palace. Uh, uh, happens many things in this palace. It was prison, was uh, um, uh, uh, court, many things. And people discover the history of the palace and the problems, the controversies, because in the, uh, not, uh, uh, maybe in the, in the dictator in Brazil, uh, was prison have a uh, uh, torture and the people uh, have to discover things about this this uh, then we mapping these controversies the many changes the history of Brazil uh, inside uh, happened inside this museum and people have to discover uh, the the problem for gentrification uh, in, in this because the, the museum is in the center and the the the, the controversy uh, 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 that uh, the invite we invite people to understand uh, if this museum is important or not because the engineer asked oh that uh, destroy and build it, uh, uh, apartments okay uh, and you and the, the, the people have to decide if the museum is important or not after the escape. And they have many clues about the, the museum history and understand the, the importance for the, 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 uh, the local, okay? And uh, uh, we mapping uh, uh, this thing to build the escape room, okay? And uh, people uh, along the escape room, uh, uh, every clue uh, to uh, in understand the history of uh, a, a, a common people who lives near to the museum and uh, they discover the, 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 the point of view for these people, okay? And uh, understand every club in the escape room to, uh, to uh, they uh, discover another point of this history and know about the museum and then uh, they have to uh, to decide if the museum uh, have to 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 uh, to con conserve its a patrimony or not and uh, everything every 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 one decides that that uh, it was important okay because they 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 they, they see the history then the, the escape room uh, but uh, uh, for example, what your uh, urgency? Uh, 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 there, there's a bomb, and you have to. to uh, uh, what the, the urgency? The activist put a bomb, 
and they have to, to discover the history in uh, 60 minutes <laughs> because the bomb, <laughs> okay? This is the, the, the urgency, this is urgency, okay? Uh, uh, ah, this is a bomb and you have to, to disarm the bomb, have a time, uh, okay? And then the, 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 the escape. Uh, this is Beit Motel that I told. Uh, it's a, a, a in fi, uh, each minute they they listen the the Norman Bates ask that is coming he's coming <laughs> and they have uh, five minutes to escape uh, the Bates Motel. Okay, this is uh, uh, the inter uh, interest for the, the this escape room to uh, feel inside the film not a, a social problem. This, uh, the, uh, the intent is uh, filled inside the situation of the film, okay? This is the, the uh, this escape room uh, was about the, the uh, escape from the, the, the uh, people who works uh, as a, uh, teachers, the people who works at the technicians in, at university. And they have many problems to conflict uh, 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 and uh, we we did this escape room to people understand uh, the importance of each other. Okay, and we build a a a a, 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 a hacker to 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 uh, the hacker is destroy the system and uh, we will destroy the system in forty minutes and you have to to work together to uh, to prevent the problem and. Uh, uh, they, they discover how to work together and discover how uh, each other think about and uh, uh, and at the end they, they discover that all are educators okay this is the 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 the, 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 the escape room uh, okay no what happened i don't know Okay, now, yeah, I think now it's more clear that, I mean, we can give it a go now. We are um, three people, we can give a go. Maybe like, because now Andra uh, um, joined maybe in the final, because we have 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. So maybe what we can do is like, or if you have an idea, please let us know. But like in the 15 minutes, we can really give a go to this, uh, to the, to the post-its. Thing, all three of us and pick a pick a. I think, uh, what I, uh, my 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 intent of the workshop to understand this this kind of uh, of beauty the importance and 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 uh, and uh, if people ask uh, ask things about this uh, and uh, and to understand more. Okay. Uh, and uh, now, now uh, uh, we are uh, are building a, a, a big, a big uh, uh, game. Uh, for example, uh, for for uh, this year, uh, about this year, uh, the Brazil is twenty uh, hundredth anniversary for independence of Brazil, and that uh, we collect what people think about independence, what not independence, uh, and uh, build uh, a big game about uh, racism, gender problem, and we collect what uh, people uh, is a, a, as a ghost, no, it's a, a, a ghost bastards. <laughs> uh, we, uh, people are creating ghosts. Uh, we, we create a, a, a framework to create ghosts, and we, we, we create a game about uh, ghosts of independence, okay? Uh, it's a, uh, and then I create games uh, with uh, uh, social content and to, to think about uh, what uh, controversies we have to, to overcome. That's it. Uh, understand that the, the, my, 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 my process, okay, uh, and uh, this I, I share with you. If you have questions, sure, sorry, 
for my my English difficulties. <laughs> okay. No, no. I think I think it's a it's a nice like. I think this came up again and again, and um, in the conference that basically escape rooms are really they should have um, a narrative basis because um, like a really strong narrative because that's how uh, participants get more involved because there is a story that is really powerful. And uh, I think that's a very good point um, for, the, for the workshop. Is, uh... Uh, uh, sorry, I, I, I don't show. We, we developed a, 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 web, uh, a web program to create escape rooms, okay? Uh, open. Uh, can I uh, only show the 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 the, the, the only, sorry. just a minute? It's uh, oh, put in the the the. Uh, sorry, is it's important the new version only in Portuguese, but uh, we we develop. It's okay it. for me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the 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 uh, sorry. Uh, that is so, just a moment. No, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Put the 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 address. Uh. The address uh, of uh, it's uh, it's a, a, a escape room. Um, it's possible to 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 create. Uh, we put the 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 uh, I show yesterday, but uh, I I, I oh, sorry. Maybe you can set your screen and so we know where to look at. Okay, here. Uh, Sai, uh, creation. Uh, uh, we try to to to. Could you see how to to create the escape room? We we have to to create the scenarios before. Uh, this will put the, the 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 name of the game, and to choose how how uh, how many time, five to six minutes. Uh, how many passwords? Uh, one to ten. Okay, and here. You put the, the, the initial message, the, the invite, okay. The, uh, people uh, put the play and the message of the play and the link for the scenario that uh, Google Slides on, on the uh, thing link or the geniali, okay. And the, 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 the uh, and the create the, the, the password and a hint for the password. Uh, and the, it depends on how much the, 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 the passwords uh, you put uh, uh, the scenarios. Uh, the problem, uh, yesterday I put the problem for the, the, the we, we have more than, than uh, more than a uh, thousand uh, uh, escape homes created for the teachers but the problem is pe people uh, transform the escape rooms in a quiz game then not a uh, uh, scenario exploratory scenarios and uh, uh, we try to to uh, uh, develop a, a, a maybe a, 
partnership to develop samples for people, not template, but samples to inspire people to create uh, scenarios more interesting. Okay, uh, this is the, our, our uh, 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 our objective now. Okay, this is and is a, is a, a platform to research and people. Uh, uh, it's open. People can and uh, when you you create your escape room, uh, we receive it uh, three links: one link to play, people play. Or, uh, another link to edit uh, to, uh, if uh, something wrong or if, uh, be become better. And uh, the third link to uh, uh, for data from people uh, who participate mm -hmm. uh, for the escape room. The name, if, if people put the name, the time, and the, the answers. Okay, mm -hmm. that's it. Do you, um, I know. Uh, yes, uh, Paula, you sent uh, the link as a direct message to me. Maybe you can send it to everybody in the group. Yeah, it's free to use. Uh, no, 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 like, or I can send it. Like, you sent it to... Hold on. At this yeah. link, uh, the gamification. Yeah. Yes. And like I see that is in Portuguese, like are you planning having it like also yes, in Spanish yes. or in, I, I, in I have uh, 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 the 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 and uh, the the first version is another version in English, but uh, uh, this is the second version. Uh, the the first version this is uh, and we have uh, an English, but uh, uh, is uh, sorry. Uh, but uh, in this, uh, uh, this is an English, but this um, uh, only three, three, uh, three uh, passwords and no rings, no rings. Okay, it's a. Oh, a, a, a the new versions we we not translate yet. <laughs> mm, okay, yeah, it's in the English version. <laughs> it's it, it's uh, the new version. You have many 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 uh, functionalities. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry, <laughs> I have to. But uh, 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 keep keep the site because we 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 man maintain the link. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Would you like to? I think in five minutes, like uh, we will close this room. Like we will go uh, for it's a lunch break, um, and then we have like at one past twenty past one, so in half an hour, uh, like it's another session. So maybe would you like to say some final words, and then so we can all go for. For lunch break. And, uh, I for think lunch yeah, break for us. I'm like in Brazil <laughs> is a completely different yeah. time zone. Uh, I I I hope that was uh, interesting for for to understand our, our, our uh, process. Uh, I'm sorry if not our workshop uh, uh, like uh, do, but I I, I think uh, to to that is possible to to to, to uh, inspiration of, uh, about the scenarios, about the, 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 the controversies, and about the, the, the uh, use uh, this platform too, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, if it, uh, interested uh, some partner uh, to, to this platform, because it's difficult to, to, uh, to we, we, we Maybe you you, you do a, a a project, but uh, uh, now is is difficult to to to. to but uh, we have many 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 uh, teachers that use this platform. But the problem uh, we we try to to invest in in samples for for teacher to inspire. I I. We don't know 
I, I, I don't believe in templates. I believe in inspiring to people, again, repertory to, to think uh, different, not uh, uh, another model to, to substitute their models, okay? Then we have to, to inspire people to discover uh, uh, their way to, to do these things, okay? Uh, more creatively, okay? And, and that's it. Thank you. Sorry for. Thank you. No, like I think in in online setups, like it's always it's very hard to uh, for us also to know how many people um, uh, they're gonna join. For example, if you remember, I sent around like a interest registration for the workshops, but again, it's always it's a, it's tricky because you never know on an online event how many people are gonna join. Um, but nonetheless, thank you, uh, even with us, for uh, for explaining us the process. Okay. Um, I think it's very interesting, like kind of like this whole thing of like using basically a topic that matters to people and making it strong from the beginning. I think we have discussed that more also in the conference. I think also for next, like maybe because like you started like um, if you I think if you have because the topic was very broad. If you have shared some examples, maybe from the beginning would be also easier for people. But is yeah tricky online workshops are work okay. in progress and a learning curve for everybody. Okay. Um, nonetheless, thank you very much. And um, yeah, for for us that also if more people are listening, um, we will have now the 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 lunch break. As I said, like the, the lunch break is till uh, 20 past one. And then we have a lunch mini session, which is basically the, the, the we have a special issue, like as part of the project, a special issue in sustainability, where people can send uh, abstracts, like paper abstracts. And then in this session, we will have, um, we will have a meet the editor session. So people can ask questions or tips regarding the process of the publication. So the editors can really, um, yeah, they can answer the questions. So thank you very much and see you all maybe in half an hour. Yeah. Thank you very much, Paula. Thank you all. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.
Hello. Hi, hello. How how were how were the previous session for you, Julia? You were uh in the hello. hello. Yes, I was in in uh in the presentation session. I could only watch half of it because I have class today and I'm here at the university. So I'm only listening with one ear. But what I heard was very interesting. I think that has been uh, the struggle for everybody, jumping in and out. <laughs> also continuing their day because everybody has also work. <laughs> um, so I think we can, yeah, I think we can start. Uh, I mean, either way, this uh, session is very uh, specific. Uh, it's about the, the special issue on the sustainability workshop um, journal that um, we have and like uh, submissions will open uh, later, early next year. But, and we have here today, the editors of the, um, of the journal, uh, Marta Ferreira Diaz, Asta Dauro Riene, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, Richard Martina and Isabel Gomez, uh, and uh, they will um, discuss a bit about the, the why we are doing it and like some and also share some tips and of course answer people's questions uh, regarding the process or anything that comes up. So. Um, yeah, you guys can take it. Who, who would like to start or um, it's gonna be like a more flexible session. So um, if someone can start with- I think yeah. Richard had a pres uh, short presentation, no? No? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to be a presentation. Like no, 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 I know, I know, but yeah, it's because like, they had, um, had some elements or, I mean, they were all there, right? Um, I, yeah, hi everyone. I do have a presentation prepared, but um, um, I can show it. I thought Isabel was going to take it over. Um, you're muted. So let me then share my screen with you. My my computer is overloaded, so um, <laughs> as all of us. <laughs> yes. So please have some patience. It takes yeah. a while for the computer to to react. Um. So I I assume that now everyone can see my screen. Yes. Yes, okay. So, um, like the spin up already mentioned, so it's a call for um, proposal for a special issue um, in sustainability journal. Um, so the name of um, the special issue is Unlocking in Innovative and Sustainable Teaching in Higher Education Institutions. Um, maybe a bit contrary to what um, the spin mentioned, it's already open um, and the deadline is the 28th of August. So um, yeah, it, um, if you have a, a, a paper that you would like to submit, you can already submit it. Uh, so the guest editors, indeed it's me myself at the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences, uh, Marta Ferreira Diaz at the Universidad de, de Aveiro. Uh, Isabel Gomez at Advances Business Services and Asta Donoriana um, at Comnos University of Technology. Um, in the meanwhile, if you have questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat and then um, there will be, um, let's say, a lot of opportunity also to ask your questions directly to all the different editors of the special issue. So, um, so what is the background of um, the special issue? Uh, so basically we have discussed the last couple of days. So yesterday and today, um, among others, that the environment has changed 
So we consider that the environment now is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And then we talked about grand societal challenges. So uh, that is the context that we would like to place this special issue in. So what we see is that there is an urgency to review and redesign then ex third, um, existing learning pedagogies innovations uh, to prepare students then to gain the skills for the jobs of the future to tackle these grand society challenges. And then, so we have discussed several different um, innovations and pedagogies. Uh, so the question is then, what might be then ideal, um, the best pedagogies or the combination of pedagogies and some of the different learnings that uh, also we discussed in this conference is such as the challenge-based learning, there is transformative sustainability learning, there's community-based learning, game-based learning. There's a lot of use of gamification, serious games, like for instance, during the plenary session, we discussed a lot about use of escape rooms and serious games in general. And this is a very short list. There are many more approaches um, in preparing students. So, um, and then also very interesting is the last, let's say, developments of the last two years, COVID, which basically pushed universities to go to online learning. Uh, in many cases, universities were not prepared, so they had to ad hoc go online. And then we see that the effect were on students both positive and negative, but negative effects were, for instance, mental health issues. Uh, we know, for instance, the students sometimes refer it to as the Zoom fatigue as well. Um, it's not only students, but sometimes educators who have the Zoom fatigue. So in other words, um, we need to innovate our teaching to improve their students' information literacy as well, how to deal with different types of, let's say, online technologies that we use um, and equip the students with skills to cope with the stress and increase their resilience. Uh, for instance, it was very nice to see in the first plenary um, um, discussion about the future proof and the future resilience um, education. So what is then the scope of um, the work? So we would like to see the work that focuses on the uh, foster the development of pedagogies and learning innovations. Um, we would like to have an emphasis on education for sustainability, and we define this very broadly, such as education that helps students change their attitudes and behaviors and gain the skills to carry out their collective responsibilities. So it has a very, very broad focus, um, the special issue. And then, um, so what are we interested in? Um, of course, original research papers. Um, they could be conceptual, they could be empirical, they can also be review articles, and we are open for both qualitative and quantitative approaches. And then a few more information about submission. So it's online on the website of sustainability, which is uh, the mdpi.com. So if you would like to submit, you need to register um, in the case you don't have an account yet. And then the way the special issue is, um, let's say uh, the papers are issued. So it's a virtual, meaning that accepted papers will be published continuously in the journal. So as soon as they are accepted, uh, they will be listed then um, on the special issue website. Um, which is very nice. So you don't have to wait until, let's say, the collection of papers. Um, let's say we have a collection of papers, but as soon as your paper, if you submit, is published, then it will, um, or accepted, it will be published. And then also what is unique about sustainability is that they have a um, peer review system, which is single blind and not double blind. And then um, if you would like to have a guide about um, for the, um, as an author, you can just go to the website of sustainability and then it provides you with more information on the editing and other aspects for you as an auditor. So that's basically it. So if you have any questions, feel free then to ask 
um, to ask us. So we have this opportunity to discuss any ideas that you might have uh, with regards to a paper that you would like to develop and you would like to um, to, to submit. I have yes. a practical question. I was asking uh, Despina, and I understood that uh, the fee, the fee of publication, could be around two thousand and um, maybe even more. Is that true? Um, excuse me. Could to you, you tell me. Uh, could you could you tell us about the fee of publication? Oh, the fee of publication. Yes, indeed. Um, I do not remember the exact numbers. Um, it's on the website, um, but it's um, the north of 2,000 um, francs, if I'm not mistaken, Swiss francs. But um, it's on the website of um, sustainability. I will post the website as well, so you will have then. Um, that information. I've done it, I've done it Richard. Ah, okay, thank you. We are, um, we are in discussion with the editor, the managing editor of sustainability to see the possibility if we could have a group of papers in the special issue, which we will then waive the fee. At um, least a part. I, I know that um, usually a part, like 10%, 15%, and we can, I mean, we are entitled to do that, but this is a kind of negotiation, as research, Richard is saying. Yeah, so we're discussing, we're discussing as well to have um, maybe also completely waived. So we're in the okay. negotiation. So um, as we have more information, we will then um, announce the information. I, I believe that it's everything uh, really on this on the website, but uh, uh, is there a maximum number of pages? Like the amount of the article, is it limited? No, uh, I think it's uh, the number of some. Um, sometimes it's the number of words that they um, limit that they fixed, but not the number of pages. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So um, we will just follow the the guidelines of sustainability, which which is indeed a number of words. Um, we're not deviating from the standard guidelines. Okay. Thank you. Um, may I add something, uh, Richard? Mm -hmm. Regarding the question um, from Eva, uh, recently I published one uh, article in sustainability and there were no word limits. And I was concerned actually that I am uh, exceeding a certain limit, uh, but um, uh, maybe it was because of the literature review, maybe that's why. Uh, but uh, since it's an online journal, it's not a printed one. Um, they could be a little bit more flexible. And of course, um, uh, it also depends on the comments uh, that um, uh, the authors will receive from the editors. And if uh, the editors, I think, would ask for more elaboration and more details, then um, it gets a little longer. And there's an ex exception maybe with that as well. OK, thank you for. Uh... For that, um, let's say, update. Thank you.
also, um, uh, I remember that Elizabeth, are you here? I remember also you had a question and I urged you to, to ask the editors. Could you? Um, um, yeah, yes. Um, no, I think my answer, oh, my question was answered um, in the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Is there maybe any topics you would like to consider? It's it's always possible that if you have um, any topics in mind, you could um, approach us directly with the topic and then uh, you can get feedback from us. Um, maybe this feedback can help you decide if you would like to, let's say, submit to the special issue. But are there any questions about topics that you might be considering at the moment? I had one. Um, I was just wondering if the uh, like the, the the when I first heard sustainability, I thought it was a only in related to environmental sustainability, uh, but it seems to be much more generic. So, um, but it it doesn't have to link to any kind of sustainable education initiative, right? No. 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 no I mean indeed. Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> it's okay, Richard. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jump in. <laughs> if you were speaking. No, please go ahead, Marta. No, no, I was just saying that the idea is the innovation part. So it's kind of a showing, uh, or as Richard was saying, uh, case studies or experiences or research on, on it, not really sustainability, but as we know that uh, this is one topic that usually is being uh, also raised. Uh, you know, the titles are always as broad as possible. So that is the point. Did I said it right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I guess um, maybe the main the main point is that um, indeed it's not focusing on environmental sustainability of one of the type of sustainability but it's more on skills required. So which skills, et cetera, will these different learning innovations or pedagogies try to foster in the students, thinking about also social capital collaboration um, with among students, other stakeholders as well. So, That's nice. Any other comments, questions? If I may then ask, um, so maybe how many of you are considering to, let's say, submit to the special issue? Maybe you could uh, uh, put thumbs up in the uh, in the chat, so we we at least have a uh, an idea what we can expect. So I see a few raise hands. Okay. Uh, how can we put thumbs up? Oh, sorry, excuse me. How is it technically possible to? It's to... Uh, in the reactions. If you click on the reactions. Okay, okay. Sorry. <laughs> now it's okay. <laughs> and then skin tone and then... <laughs> I've never done it before. Yeah. Yeah, I'm You're always worried. learning. Okay, um, so 
if there are no other questions, then I suggest that um, we could um, we could finalize this session. Um, I mean, uh, most of us, um, at least I think, maybe we still have some time then that you could grab a quick lunch. Um, the next session starts at two o'clock. But I would like then to reiterate that. So if you have any um, ideas um, and you're not sure that you would like to, let's say, um, develop the paper to submit, uh, you could always um, send us an email uh, with your idea. You could maybe put abstracts, for instance, and then we can give you a few feedback that hopefully helps you to make a decision uh, whether you would like to submit or not. Yeah, so thank you very much for um, being here. And um, I would say that enjoy the last sessions of the conference. Uh, can you. I also ask uh, a small question uh, just to double check? Uh, um, is that true that my colleagues that were not present in the conference could also join me in the article? Yes. Yes. Sure. So the okay. special issue is open to to everyone. So you do not need to be part of the conference to submit to the special issue. Thank you. That's a great opportunity. So um, with that being said, um, thank you again. I'm looking forward to your submissions. See you soon. Yeah, thank see you, you in a bye. few minutes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye, everyone.
Hello, Mario. Um, Julia, Mario. Um, we have the name, the same name in our computer, but he will um, uh, facilitate the session for you. Okay, also, thank you. So. So, but I will be able to share my screen and, um, okay. Uh, but if I need breakout rooms, Mario will do that for me. Um, so, um, yeah, Mario tell me that he has like some issues, uh, in facilitating. Okay. Uh, so maybe I will, because yeah, in case like he can't hear like the audio of the computer, um is off so so yes i think i will start like I will, okay i think i don't know like are we but just letting you know so maybe i will help but like maybe if you want you can start and uh i mean we can wait a few more minutes for people um but i think i think you can do you can start whenever you want whenever yes you want. yeah whatever you prefer i mean um 
like we have 15 participants um I think like what we did before and it worked for workshops, like if somebody wants to participate in the workshop, please keep your camera open. So uh, Julia knows um, with whom to engage and, uh, or like you can let her know. So she also knows like how many people to consider in the uh, in the action, in exercises. <laughs> um, so I guess, yeah, like we, you can you can start whenever you feel ready. Like I think we already have people. Okay, thank you very much, Despina. Yeah, I think I'd like to wait a few more seconds because I instead of punishing those who come late, I want to treat those who are on time. And I already posted the first puzzle for you. So if you solved it, please type solved it in the chat. Please do not type the solution. And if you need a hint, let me know. Sorry, because I also want to put, like, where is, is the, this uh, screen? Is this the, the riddle? That's the riddle, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to take a closer look at the screen. Thank you. It certainly has its advantages and its disadvantages to have the last workshop during a conference. <laughs> I think everybody is already a little bit tired and overwhelmed. Uh, on the bottom left, you find the hint how to solve this riddle. The cipher is called pig pen cipher. I don't know if that helps, <laughs> but maybe it helps to know that it's a cipher. And the letters of the alphabet correspond to the yeah, symbols you see on your screen. I can give one more hint. <laughs> the first letter is a W. Yeah. I actually figured that one out, but not the rest. <laughs> okay. And Isabel, how did you figure it out? Uh, uh, I associated the dot within the V with the cross. Yes, where the W is, and there's a W with a dot on top. So exactly. that's my reasoning. Okay. okay. Yes, I'm very good at this. I won the 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 escape room yesterday. Oh, so. really? Good. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we figure out the second one? Is this where you're stuck? So the second for the second letter or symbol, you have to look at the most right at this tic-tac-toe diagram. And it is the letter that has four corners filled out around it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best sound. That's the sound I like to hear. <laughs> 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 
but you, yeah, Julia, you, you have two letters in that condition, right? No. Take a look at the details. It's K. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's it's the E. Yes, e? Marta, how did you figure yeah. it out? As you, uh, I mean, middle. as you said, is it, it uh, yeah. is the square. Yes, it's the square. And there's a tic-tac-toe uh, diagram with and without a dot, like the yeah. eggs with and without a dot. Yeah. Otherwise, we do not have enough of the letters. So, uh, so that's what I mean. I, I saw two, two possibilities, the E of the N. But because I didn't realize that yes. the second one with the N, it was not possible because yes. of the dot. It has a dot, exactly. Yeah. So now we know the dot. We already know the third letter, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Christina <laughs> solved it. Yay. Okay. I don't have a giveaway. I'm sorry. You just have the honors of having solved it first. Okay. But I think the others got slowly got the hang of it too. Yeah. So welcome <laughs> welcome to the workshop um okay oh i'm sorry <laughs> okay uh welcome to the workshop educational escape rooms in foreign language education with google forms and for those who don't know me my name is julia i am originally from germany and i live in the netherlands since three years and before I used to live in China, where I taught university students uh, German as a foreign language. And uh, I also organized teacher trainings there. And now I'm a, a teacher educator at the German teacher training at the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences, where I actually am right now in a booth. <laughs> and um, I'm also a PhD student at the University of Amsterdam and the University of Jena in Germany. And my research interests are the use of ICT in the language classroom, as well as teacher education. And the idea for this workshop uh, was inspired by my, my love for language learning. It's not only my profession, but it's also my passion. And uh, my love for detective stories such as Sherlock Holmes and puzzle games and, of course, escape rooms. Uh, and I like to explore the possibilities of um, using games and gamification in my own classes. And today I would like to share my ideas and my passion with you in this workshop. Um, regarding the workshop schedule, I planned about uh, 30 minutes for the basics, how we can use escape rooms in foreign language education, a short introduction on Google Forms, and uh, what we have to keep in mind when building our own virtual escape room. And uh, the information about building an escape room is mainly based on the unlock materials, such as the handbook and the MOOC. <laughs> and I had the honors of piloting the MOOC. I am a, yeah, a MOOC graduate myself, and I can highly recommend it. Uh, and the foreign language ed education part is based on ideas of modern foreign language education, such as task-based learning, meaningful contents and uh, communicative language teaching and learning. And uh, in the application part, which will also take about 30 minutes, um, you will create your own ed educational escape rooms with Google Forms. And in a short evaluation, you will then present your work and we can talk about your creative process. Um, because I would uh, like to adapt this workshop to your needs, uh, before we jump right into it, I would um, like to ask you to go to menti.com uh, and use the following code to answer this question. How would you describe your knowledge about escape rooms? Commercial meaning real life, actual escape rooms, educational, so used with educational learning purposes and with Google Forms. Okay. 
Okay, I don't know how many people are actually, actually attending. <laughs> so I'm gonna wait a few more seconds. I see that, of course, as I expected, most of us have uh, experience or are uh, advanced in educational escape rooms, but also nice to see commercial escape rooms. But uh, when I inter interpret this correctly, not many of you have uh, experience with Google Forms. Oh, okay, it's becoming more now. <laughs> Okay, but educational is, yeah, overwhelming. Okay, um, since uh, many of you are already experts on uh, educational escape rooms, um, I will uh, give you a demo escape room that I constructed for this workshop. Uh, and I, I made one in German <laughs> for if you really would like a challenge. And I also made one in English if that makes sense. If English is not your native language, such as such as mine, um, and I will post it in the chat for you. One second. Where did the chat go? That's a bit difficult. I'm going to start sharing my screen so I can find the chat and I will post the links to two escape rooms in the chat. You can uh, you can try one of them. You can try both. Just click around a bit. Um, you might have to copy the URL into your browser and um, it works best with a laptop and you will need sound. You can turn your camera off. It, it's just important that we meet here again in 10 minutes. So that would be 2.25. You have 10 minutes now to try those escape rooms. And if you have any questions, I'll be here.
Excuse me. Yes. Uh, I actually haven't experienced before with the escape rooms, and now when I open the form, uh, they ask me dial the number, and then I actually enter my number, and then they don't actually go to the next page. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's the wrong number. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, it's not my own number. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Because I cannot see any picture because they ask me to look at the office and I cannot see any picture in the first page. Are you, are you trying the English? Yes. Okay. You have to solve the puzzle and enter that number. You can see the numbers, right? Uh, the number is like nine, five, yes. six, six. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Thank you.
One more minute. One more minute to escape. Okay, time is up. Please come back. <laughs> Turn your camera back on. Maybe we can talk about the puzzles. Welcome back. Can you give me a thumbs up if you actually solved one of the escape rooms? Or both, even. <laughs> no? Was the time too short? How far did you get? I got stuck on London Bridge. OK. Yeah, me too. I got stuck in the for like the the password. Which password? The computer uh, password. The password to open the computer, like four grapes, one apple. Seven. Oh, this. Yeah, yeah. Does anyone have the solution to that? Yes, Evelina. Uh, I used the Google Slack for it, and it found me the name that was hidden in this picture. The Google Slack. I know this is the this is the name this is the name. Yes, yes, but I I used Google Slack, uh, and it uh, showed me it opened the, on the internet where such a puzzle is. <laughs> oh, that's cheating! That's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we tell our students that they have to hand in their phones before they play in escape room, right? Okay. The 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 answer to the four grapes, one apple, seven bananas is that you always take the letter from the word. The, so, for example, four grapes mean the fourth letter of this word. One apple, the first letter of apple. The seven seven bananas, mm -hmm. seventh letter of bananas. Then you get the password passion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the the with the London Bridge, the picture you have to read it out loud. Andrew, and then you find out that Andrew is his name. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Um, here I have a, a oh, sorry, I'm going to start the presentation. Yeah, here I have the, the behind the scenes, the setup for this uh, escape room in English. You see that it is, uh, if you follow the steps, one to 11, it is pretty linear, which is a property of Google Forms. And only in the, the multiple choice that was meant to throw you off the track a bit, uh, I don't know how many if you actually tried the wrong answers on purpose, but uh, if, you, if you listen to it, you lose time automatically and you can also give a time penalty if students choose the wrong answer. So you have to solve that to go uh, go to the next one the computer username do you have uh, any more questions about the escape rooms you played and the setup okay i'm taking that as a sign that you don't have any more questions at the moment i i do actually like mm -hmm. 
This was this was actually a really nice one. I think this comes back to what we have been saying through, through the whole conference that like narrative really matters. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually I really liked how also the the language was not static and it was really like like somebody was almost listening to a narrator. So it was very realistic. Um, it was written, uh, but I have a question, like a practical question, like in making this um, escape room, like. Of course, you use Google Forms, but like how many other tools? Like because also I saw like the recorded, um, like uh, until the point I reached, like these were basically the recorded. Uh, yeah, I don't know, yeah. Like the, yeah. The, I used an audio file. Yeah, I mean for this escape room especially, I didn't use many other applications. But if you have something, which I will talk about later for a little bit, if you have something like grammar exercises, of course, it makes sense to use other applications like learning apps where you, the, the thing is with Google Forms, it always needs one correct answer, right? It always needs one password, one code, and how to generate those codes. You cannot just do with the tools you have. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot embed anything into Google Forms except for pictures and videos, but you can always link to other sites. And then you can hide the code on the other websites or in the other exercises. Yeah, you just have to make sure that it has one definite answer in the end or one definite number code. Yeah, good question, actually. Yeah, I will I will get to that a bit later. But um, uh, I don't know if you have Google Forms, if you ever work with Google Drive, but all the audio files that were in there are just recorded and linked on my Google Drive. And later, I will also give you a, a link to a Padlet where I list many more of those puzzle tools. Also, uh, the one I used for making the audio file, just a, just a website where you can read out a text aloud, and it is supported for many languages, also German. If you want to check out the German escape room as well, it has uh, the German audio file. Okay, um, all the skills we uh, typically value in educational escape rooms, like communicative skills, teamwork skills, critical thinking, problem solving, are of course also uh, used. Can of course also be used in in escape rooms about uh, language teaching, um, but escape rooms in the subject of language teaching can um, be used also for introducing, developing, or even testing many other skills, of course, related to this field, such as uh, reading comprehension, listening and audiovisual comprehension, speaking and pronunciation, writing and orthography, grammar, vocabulary, culture, literature, media, and research. And I recently uh, added visual literacy to this uh, list. And um, I would like to demonstrate all of these skills and topics, but most of us uh, don't have all week. So I chose um, reading comprehension because I figured not all of you are language teachers, but uh, you might work with texts in your classes more than, let's say, vocabulary or grammar. So this is the introduction to our demo escape room. Why am I showing this to you again? Um, if you decide to tell your story of your escape room in the target language, your students will already perform reading comprehension from the very beginning. And since they are hopefully interested in what will happen in the story and uh, how to solve the puzzles, they don't even see it as a chore. It's a means to an end to participate in the game. Um, and also, if your students are beginners, uh, with this language, you can still use the target language. You can keep it simple. A few easy sentences can be enough to introduce the place, the setting, and the goal, because like Espina said, the narrative is so important in escape rooms to make it an immersive experience. And uh, of course, your puzzles can also include reading comprehension. So um, I will demonstrate how to set up the escape room with Google Forms. Now you go to forms.google.com and open a new uh, blank form. And here I can I can either copy paste my text or I can upload a picture of the text, which I will do now. Um, saved it. 
in my escape room folder under reading comprehension and I'm going to upload the text as a picture and you can see it appear here and now you could just use a Google Forms function to add a multiple choice question or a short answer question. The thing with um, multiple choice in Google Forms is um, you, you are not able to mark the wrong and the correct option. Let's say if you have um, if you have three options here, you cannot say which one is correct and which one is not correct because it's a, it's a form um, for making surveys and such. It just can guide you to another section. So if I say here, go to section based on answer, um, I can create a new section. Let's say that is the section you go to when you give the correct answer. And I can create another section that goes to the wrong answer, maybe with a, with a picture of a stop sign or something. And then you have to guide your students back to this question. So continue, let's say option one is the right answer. Then I go to section with the correct answer and otherwise, I go to the sections with the wrong answer. This is how you how you implement multiple choice in your Google Forms. You cannot say it's right or wrong. You can say this you go to this section based on this answer. Yeah. And with the short answer, it's um, it's easier. You always have to mark required and then re response validation. So for example, if the if the password is password, uh, the players can only go further if they type exactly this word in there. That means that's what response validation means. Only if they type it correctly, they can go to the next section, continue to next section. And this is basically how Google Forms works. So you can implement your reading compre comprehension um, exercises or questions in here but um, I would like to show you a more fun way to do this I'm going to upload another picture this picture has my reading comprehension questions I don't know if you can see that I'm going to make it a bit, a bit bigger um, so here comes the fun part every an every every uh, answer true false or not in the text is connected to a number as you can see here and uh, the students I'm sorry can I insert another picture the students will get a QR code that is missing some parts and according to the number they choose on this reading comprehension they have to fill in the correct number on this QR code. And if they do that correctly, they scan, they scan the code with their phones and it leads them to a website or to a video with a password or the next clue to the next puzzle. And I will also provide you with a tool for making this draw your own QR code. Do you have any questions so far? I have a question. Um... Mm -hmm. When you are designing uh, such an escape room, uh, yeah. do you prepare with a scenario at first or like you draw a scheme or you just do it on the go? Oh, that's a very good question. I would say a little bit of both. <laughs> um, um, with, for this one, I actually started with my learning goals and my goal was um, to show you what an escape room with Google Forms looks like and what elements of language teaching you can implement in there. So listening, reading, uh, vocabulary, and so on. Um, so yeah, then I have my, had my puzzles and then I thought, oh, which narrative would be nice? How, how can the, the workshop setting uh, connect to, to what, uh, what you as a player would be interested in and how can it connect the puzzles all together? So the, I, I started with that first. And the setup 
I actually built afterwards <laughs> for you to visualize it, uh, what it looks like. But, okay, thanks. Um, <laughs> the next step will be, I mean, most of you know the main areas to consider when designing an educational escape room. Um, and we, we heard again that uh, this morning how important it is to define your learning objectives, to connect your puzzles and to involve your players in a narrative. And um, these can be seen as stages that you can follow step by step. You don't have to follow it in that order. All that matters is that you incorporate it, that you take all of them into account. And I uh, created a step-by-step -step guide based on this. Uh, and I also um, adapted other planning tools in a, in a Padlet, which I would like to present to you now. I'm going to give you the link in a second. And, uh, but before, I would like to show you what's on there. So uh, if you're not familiar with Google Forms, I uh, have a, here you can find a, a detailed guide for all the functions you will need to create an escape room with Google Forms. Um, as well as the step-by-step -step guide based on this overview we just saw. Um, and you will also find other planning tools, for example, for locks and multiple choice and complex puzzles. Um, you, uh, I, I, uh, can, I, I gave you the links to, the, for example, to draw the QR code or uh, here the Pigment cipher we saw in the beginning, but also uh, yeah, creating crosswords or Morse code puzzles and so on. And um, the next section is a collection of um, from other people who made uh, also amazing collections about uh, escape rooms, uh, which I can also highly recommend. And if you need more inspiration, you will find our demo escape rooms here and some some other escape rooms with Google Forms or without. Uh, and uh, for the stories and themes, inspiration about that, I have some links, some websites here. And also what I think is very important, what I incorporated in my German escape room more actually is uh, pictures, pictures and, and videos make it a bit more lifelike. Yeah. Um, yes, so I will post you the link in the chat. This is the Padlet. And uh, yeah, now we come to the application part and I would uh, still give you the full 30 minutes and subtract uh, the time of it from our evaluation part because now I would like you to create uh, an escape room with Google Forms. And uh, at least if you can manage one story element and one puzzle element and um, Yes, uh, just remember if you want to create a learning experience for your students, it's important to align the puzzles with the learning outcomes and also include the puzzles into a narrative. But I know this is a pressure cooker environment. We don't have much time. So I think one story element and one puzzle is enough. Um, as a guide, you have your uh, escape room, step-by-step -step guide and the Google Forms manual and the resources you can find on the Padlet. And now I would uh, ask Spina, to make, uh, I don't know, maybe three breakout rooms. Sina? Um, okay, I'm gonna make three. Uh... Mm -hmm. And while the spinner is doing, the, is doing this, do you have any uh, questions at all? Task in the chat. I am sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I will have to leave, so I will probably not take part. But thank you very much for this presentation, and I find it extremely useful. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's good to hear. Okay. Um. Uh, so yeah. Okay. So something maybe to like. In we had this issue maybe with a, a online escape rooms, like I made the session, but then a few people um, 
bond it in the first two oh. <laughs> minutes and then yeah. I had really to move some people to cover because some people didn't happen so please if I unexpectedly move you somewhere <laughs> it's only to make the rooms more yeah. consistent so excuse maybe um yeah um I, I would I, if you don't have um a google google a gmail address right now um maybe one of your team members has and i would suggest maybe to to share a google forms with um i'll show you how uh if you have your google forms you can you can share it with other okay. members here send and share uh add editor so we would have to add uh, the email addresses of your of your group members so they can edit it together or just share your green the screen and one of, of you edits it same counts for the step-by-step -step guide so you all are on the same page and after yeah 30 minutes uh, uh 3 15 we'll see here uh, see each other again here and i'll come to visit you to ask any answer any questions uh, you Great. might still have i'm opening the rooms now okay thank you Uh, Julia uh, Rajiv asked something in the chat, maybe. Yeah. Of course. If we still have time. <laughs> it always takes more time than expected. Okay, let's see. In room one, I have. We have two active people, mm. room two, two active people, and room three, four, four active people. So I merge one and two. Yes, good idea. Okay. Oh, no, they left. No. Oh, why did you leave? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to put everybody that is. Okay, maybe I can take uh one person okay so i make them three and three because now we have two yeah two and, okay. that's a good idea yeah okay now we have three and three mm -hmm. okay i'll go check on room two
Okay, all teams are set up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you see now in room two, there are one, two, three, four, five, six active people mm -hmm. in the room three, three. But changing them now would be a bit. No, that's that's yeah. fine, I think. They just, uh, yeah. okay it's not a problem i don't know if they're all active
Hello, Elizabeth. Would you like to join a room? Sorry, um, I'm still at work okay. <laughs> and, no and we're wrapping up now so, and people have been popping in and out. So apologies, I tried to create a, a little video in the meantime, but that wasn't successful. Oh. <laughs> but okay. please, anyway. <laughs> okay, so we know. Thank you. Okay.
Okay, sorry, I, I misunderstood that um, completely. <laughs> okay. No problem. This is because since this, this workshop was originally <laughs> meant for language teachers or students yes, who will um, become language teachers, that's, okay. that's why. <laughs> okay, thanks.
how they are uh, how are they doing oh, what i you know, you're muted sorry yeah uh slowly but steady <laughs> i'll i'll um i'll visit the other group and maybe you can you can uh close the breakout rooms in one minute so they're back at 15. okay thank you yep Okay, welcome back. Sorry to interrupt you. Now you're uh, getting started, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have much time. Um, I would like to know how it went um, uh, with the first group, maybe with uh, with Evelina, present their result. If you can share your screen and present us what you did so far. And yeah, as you probably know, it takes time to to create a well thought through escape room. And that's why I also uh, let you work in groups, because if you share this passion, why not do it together? And like an actual escape room, it's not only more fun, but you can also combine your strengths. Like uh, some of you might be better at telling stories. Some of you might be better at constructive alignment. Uh, others love to create puzzles. So uh yeah i hope you enjoyed these advantages evelina or the group number one would you like to present um okay thank you julia uh indeed we were just at the start of our learning process uh we we could experience was it a was it a, is it like to create an escape room for language learners we uh, did not do much, but at least we tried to, to begin our escape room. Uh, we went through this step-by-step -step guide that asked us to revise uh, of what needs to be um, taught in advance before planning and designing any escape room. Uh, that it's not just about creating, but it's also thinking what, what are the aims of your escape room, uh, which um, uh, stage or what stage or uh, when do you plan to apply it for your students, what, uh, what uh, is or are aims of your escape rooms, what, what do you want your students to develop, which language skills or which uh, other 21st century skills you want them to develop. So it's very important, but, uh, and then after you have all these things, you can start creating your, your escape room. In our case, we just entered a collection of pictures, random collection of pictures from Star Wars. And we, we entered just the one question. Uh, and then the, the help of uh, Julia, we, we found out how to, to make uh, students move to the next question. But this is uh, all what we could do. Uh, in the future, we plan to advance the, the, our, the, this skill. So thank you, Julia, very much for letting us learn and improve.
Thank you very much for this uh, interesting puzzle. I love it. <laughs> I love the theme. And maybe you can, if you had to link it to a narrative, you could make it uh, Star Wars themed. Uh, just, uh, just an idea from my side. Okay. Uh, and thank you for also talking about your uh, a creative process and what difficulties you encountered, uh, namely the multiple choice. It's not that easy. It's a bit tricky. But once you get the hang of it, uh, it becomes easier. Okay. Thank you. Uh, for this presentation. Uh, would the next group also like to present something? <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> but if you if you do, just share your screen and show us what you made. That would be nice. Yeah, we didn't uh, do uh, much. OK. I, I think that Sonia started to develop a Google form, but there's only the title, right, Sonia? <laughs> you're you, you you're mean, muted. You have to turn on your mic. I can I can share my screen just to to, to show. Um, let me see. No. Oh, I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I. Well, it's. I think I. I sorry, Yulia. I. I think I lost it. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, but Sonia, you ha you had an idea, uh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, how to uh, in incorporate what you already have into Google Forms. Would you like yeah. to talk about that? Okay. So what I what I was thinking of was. Um, but I thought about mathematics or so mathematics. So Julia has this passion about language. I have this passion about mathematics. And so I was uh, thinking about using patterns. So because patterns with dots, they, they are nice figures. So, and then to put, it was a nice pattern and then ask the, the people to try to guess how the patterns would be going on. Uh, so, that was uh, actually the idea to walk through patterns and also probably uh, to, to also making some puzzle where you can combine patterns to, for example, to open some room. So, so that yeah. was it. Mathematics and escape rooms definitely go well together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think so. <laughs> Number codes and because it's an advantage that you always have a definitive answer, right? In language, that's maybe not that easy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I, I think when when children or students of mathematics they they see a puzzle in the context of mathematics, it, it's it's very normal, you know. You, yeah. you you and when you see a puzzle, perhaps in another context, you don't know what you have to do. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. It's, uh, Okay, so thank you for sharing your ideas and maybe we'll see a Google Forms escape room about math, a math themed escape room from you in the future. I would really no. like to see that. No? <laughs> Shame. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you so much for your presentations and, and uh, the insights and your creative processes. I would like um, to draw your attention to one more tool, which is uh, not stolen, but uh, taken from the MOOC, and that is the self-assessment tool of uh, digital. It's also for, for actual escape rooms, but also for digital uh, educational escape rooms, um, which you can use to, yeah, evaluate your own escape rooms with uh, regard to the step-by-step -step guide that I showed you. Um, and um, yeah, let's talk about the incorporation because, uh, the power of the escape room experience uh, often lies in how you incorporate it into your class because you should shouldn't do it isolated before you should give a prepare your students give an introduction to what they're about to experience the technicalities how does it work especially if you have a if you have an, an online escape room you need to tell them what to do how to how to solve the puzzles how to win the game and also if you have a hint system like i i just gave you the hints in the beginning orally that maybe they have to earn the hints and you can and you can only have a certain amount of hints and stuff like that and since it's a language escape room maybe you can also introduce junks so 
um, typical sentences, typical phrases that they're going to need to talk to each other also in the target language to save the uh, to to um, solve the escape room. Then you play the room, and uh, the the power of the escape room experience often also lies in the debrief. Make sure you set aside at least 10 to 15 minutes to allow students to talk about the experience in the form of discussions, in the form of questions. And I recommend having the students explain each of the puzzles. Okay, that's it from my side. Can I ask you real quick, how many of you would consider uh, Google Forms for creating virtual escape rooms from now on can you give me a thumbs up if you at least consider or raise your hand okay yeah that's yeah nice it's good to see uh the padlet will stay available to you of course and i will type my email in the chat so if you have any feedback recommendations if you want to get in touch maybe work together just feel free to email me thank you julia this is really uh, useful and beneficial workshop. Thank you so much for your participation. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Julia. I, in which in which in which faculty do you work? Languages in the Cluster Talen in the Kunstam House on the sixth yeah. floor. So, so we are colleagues. Do you yes, know we that? are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Julia, oh, that, not dot com. That's wrong. Dot thank you very much. Thank you very much. I will give my students the task to design escape rooms themselves. And... Very nice. <laughs> That's a good idea. I will do the same. Than I am, and they will be more creative, I'm sure. <laughs> and I hope the materials will also help them. And you can also adapt them, of course, to your field of experience. Yes. At havia.nl. And you also find my LinkedIn on the conference website if you want to get in touch via that. Okay, thank uh you. Julia, one last question. Oh, of course. Is there a collection of escape rooms uh, and a resource page website that has a collection of escape rooms for language learners? Not that I know of, but um, um, the project. Uh, let me. The website of this project has. Yeah. The there, there is, I think, under breakout edu resources, there's also a lot you can use for the language classrooms. Okay. So not not specifically. Uh, as far as I know, yeah. Uh, and I'm not I'm certainly not the only one, but I haven't found anything else specifically on language classroom. Okay, I see. Thank you. Uh, one more question, uh, Julia. Will this Padlet be available for 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 us later on? Because yes. it's a very good resource, also. Yes, definitely. We would appreciate if we could use it too. Thank you very much. Yeah, if if we can do a link from Unlock to your uh, Padlet, it's mm -hmm. unbelievable because you use it really, really well. Congratulations, Julia. Thank you. Thank you. I think you did very, very well, the MOOC. And uh, I mean, and with your, your experience is what I was uh, saying in our group is that in the in the Padlet, there's some references to the MOOC that we are very happy, but also your experience in Bidded. So is uh, uh, is the best way. I mean, is is really what we is a, the wish of the project is to have people doing as you did. So congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Then um, if uh, if we are done, yeah. Uh, just wait a few more minutes, don't uh, leave. Um, we are waiting for also the workshop uh, from track two to finalize, and then uh, they will, uh, they will, people will join here, so then we can have um, a, a formal um, closing and thank you. Uh, nonetheless, thank you all so much for being here uh, in the final workshop for uh the day we, we we can't clap because you usually right on face to face we clap and, uh... <laughs> we can clap we get, let's say uh, uh, yes we should definitely clap um uh, 
thing. Like emoji club, you guys are killing me. I thought we would really clap like people. <laughs> but fine, yeah, what is the emoji? Yes. Um, let's see, I think now. So people do. Okay. I think, yeah, more. Yeah, I think people are joining from the other. Um, uh, okay, so I think, yeah, people are joining. So maybe, um, yeah, again, um, I would like to thank everybody for participating in this one and a half. Uh, days of the conference uh, uh people already have uh like sent uh, personal thanks like for for organize, organizing the uh, the sessions like they found value in them and i think i think that's the most important thing like we couldn't um have the the conference on site due to um people aspect of it wasn't possible for them to visit amsterdam so at least uh, the online um, conference paid uh, in that, uh, paid back in that. Uh, I would like maybe to, uh, also we will create the session with, because we, we have the recording uh, all the sessions the past days, one and a half days. So we're gonna um, upload, we will try to find, like we, are, like we are discussing how we can upload them also if you want to share them with colleagues probably we will share the we will see how, what we can do with the work definitely considering the presentations we will see what we will do with the workshops because there were breakout rooms it doesn't really make sense um so maybe before before i give um the mic to you marta i would like maybe to ask a few of like uh, like this also conference wouldn't be possible without the moderation and the facilitation of all the sessions. So we have here some uh, moderators. So maybe I would like to um, pass them the mic and ask them like what maybe one thing that really uh, stood out of you, like a highlight of the sessions that you were in and like you really liked something very much. Maybe uh, ask her like, would you like to share something? Yes. I will be happy to. Uh, thank you very much uh, again for the organization for everything uh, and uh, all the participants and also the speakers. It was a very, very rewarding experience for me. Uh, I got to uh, moderate two sessions uh, and I have learned a lot um, and I uh, moderated two different um, themes. Uh, in the first one, we were looking into education escape rooms and I saw that we were discussing a lot on what counts as educational escape room. So it made me think uh, the field is still new and developing and we are still defining it. The com components of the EER and is it the time element? Is it uh, a game element or is it the storyline? And uh, how we can configure these different elements to get the best results. Um, so it was really, really interesting to see the presentation, also the discussions that we had. Uh, and in the next um, experience, I moderated, uh, we discussed uh, about the challenge-based learning. Uh, and uh, we had um, really different experiences uh, from different parts of the world, from different uh, universities uh, that use the same methodology. But uh, the diversity was interesting, how the same methodology was interpreted and implemented in different contexts, maybe based on the resources of these uh, institutions and how uh, this innovative pedagogy tackled different societal challenges in those regions. So it was really interesting, again, uh, with diverse uh, experiences that, were, that was shared and uh, it was really, really inspiring. Mm, and I hope uh, all the participants uh, enjoy the sessions as much as uh, I did. Amazing. Uh, somebody else would like to uh, also, Andre, you presented like the the MOOC and like uh, in the session, like the flagship project uh, output of this project. 
maybe uh, something that stood out to you? I mean, you also ran the whole pilot. <laughs> you would like uh, maybe something that uh, stood out to you uh, that you would like to share? Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, the during the preparation for the launch of the book and of all the versions that we have, so uh, you know, it uh, I had this uh, this uh, overwhelming feeling, you know, to see what we have managed to do in those few years. You now, uh, remembering the first uh, pilot, the first versions of the MOOC, and then then how everything has changed. Uh, so this this is, I think, was the, the strongest impression. And as I said uh, yesterday, so we have it thanks to all the contributions and to the co uh, great cooperation uh, with our partners uh, here. So uh, I'm, I'm very proud uh, that uh, we all have uh, managed to produce such a nice uh, result. And uh, really those who... Um, uh, have a visit to the MOOC are, are really very much impressed and then they say that it's, it's really a very valuable uh, resource for, for educators. So I am very uh, optimistic uh, about the, the dissemination and, and further uh, use of, of this uh, product, of this uh, intellectual output that we have produced in the project. Thank you. Thank you all for, for the contributions. Thank you all. Uh, is somebody like, yeah, we don't have to keep it long. Uh, if somebody else wants to share something, um, like uh, Christine, Richard, Flair also, that you helped me so much, but uh, facilitate the, thank you so much. Uh, either the leg, if somebody wants to share something, please come ahead. Um, I can say a few words. Uh, first of all, Despina, thank you for inviting me to actually help you out on this conference uh, because it's been really interesting for me to join some of the sessions and I really liked the interactivity that there were so many workshops next to all the research-based presentations um, and for me what really stuck with me is not just one presentation but just seeing how a lot of people actually got inspired in the sessions using different tools where they see hey this is a tool I can use and I've actually been I think it was a workshop yesterday where some people were actually creating hands-on tools right away that they will be using in their course. And I think that's something so valuable. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. Okay, then. Uh, so I will... Uh... Oh, sorry, we have a question. Uh... Uh, it's not a question, actually. Mm -hmm. I wanted to um, also chip in um, that it has been a very insightful um, experience for me, especially that I'm studying my research concerning uh, gamified training in, in University of Turku. So it has been really, really wonderful experience to participate in this and then get to see how how different aspects are, are regarded and what, what really helps the most. So it has been vital, especially the last session we had was was really educative also because it's it's particularly the field that I was um I am researching in. So thank you. Thank you as well. Um, okay, then. So with, with that said, I will pass it to you, Marta. You can um, finally you can form. Yeah, no, because I I will not be long. Thank you for the organization, the Spina, and everyone from you in uh you were great i mean all these conditions of uh online conferences uh, we, we have been saying that all the time we are very very tired so i can imagine how you are that you have to manage all the stress and all the details so thank you for making it uh possible because uh as uh, Desvina said, this was an inside conference and we were really excited about it. Then we had to change. And uh, I mean, I have to say after all, and after listening the last participant, thank you for changing it because I think that some people that uh, uh, participated, uh, maybe they were not able to go to Amsterdam. So it was really great. Um, I just said to Julia in the last session that uh, was amazing to see that people 
really got what we did these three years. And I think I will, I will not repeat what Audra said about the MOOC, but I think all the outputs of the project are being disseminated, are being used. That is something that uh, we really wanted since the beginning. And it's really good to see people <laughs> doing like that, all the partners, because I think the main point of an European project is to get people using the materials and getting as much excited as us when uh, we did it. Of course, there, there was a lot of work, <laughs> but uh, using, doing all the escape rooms, uh, seminars, everything that was um, included uh, in the submission. So some of the things we had to do, but it was great to see at the end with this final conference that people got the feeling that, uh, uh, that uh, we got all these three years because he's really finishing. We will we'll meet uh, the last time next week in, uh, in Amsterdam. So this is the end of this unlock, but uh, I'm sure that uh, all people that is using, that used and will be using this will uh, for sure getting, uh, as I said, all the feelings, all the effort, all the excitement, because I think that can be also um, a way of defining what we did. So, I mean, thank you. Uh, all the workshops, all the, um, I've been ju jumping around a bit in these two days because I wanted to see uh, the feeling of everyone, but uh, all the presentations, all the workshops were great. Uh, I think everyone, as I said, was uh, on the mood of this. So everyone is already convinced that uh, gamification, escape rooms, um, compromising the students and edu the educators are the best way of uh, getting this. So thank you and uh, keep in touch because uh, I think all of us, all the partners want to know uh, how this is uh, will be used in the future, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, okay, so and a final note, like for for this project, we have one final like um, piece of like uh, an output to deliver, which is like a cheat sheet for people to you to better use all our materials to create escape rooms. So keep an eye on our uh, website, which is like um, eu-log.e and log.eu. Um, and, and thank you very much. Have a lovely afternoon or uh, morning, if you're, not, if you're not in the same time zone. And um, yeah, we'll see you all a bit around, I hope. Yeah, see you around. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you.